for what you've been waiting for all day long. The most famous words in motorsports, and the final time that you will hear them this season is the, the president and CEO of Alliance Development Corp. Fort Worth, Texas, Ross Perot, Jr. Ross? Gentlemen, start your engine. <laughs> and 960 laps and today at Atlanta Motor Speedway it comes down to the final 328 laps in the next four hours we'll know who the NASCAR Winston Cup champion is from Corpus Christi slipped across the line into Winston Cup racing. Today, Terry Labonte holds a scant 47-point lead over his nearest challenger teammate, Jeff Gordon. The task would seem simple. Finish eighth or better, and you're the champion. But it isn't quite so easy. The bones broken in his left hand have not healed. And despite a squint for support and electrical wires to mask the pain, you can see the discomfort in Terry's face when he climbed out following the final practice yesterday afternoon. One would believe he would have to take that left hand off the wheel during this 328 lap marathon today. And if he does, and if he can prevail, years from now we'll look back to Monday's headline and says, this tough Texan won the title single-handedly. Gotta be cool. Stand oh, the leader. Watch the walk. I gotta stay in the draft. And the guy that could be coming is Jeff Gordon. Fast since he got here, and maybe faster than he showed in final practice here on Saturday. Now listen, they want me to tell you about him. What do you want to know? The guy's won 10 races this year. He's second on the grid. He's second in points. He got his first Bush win at this track. He made his Winston Cup debut at this track. He knows what he needs to do at this track today. He needs to get to the front fast and stay there for as long as possible. Don't worry about Jeff Gordon. He's been able to live out one dream while chasing another. Maybe a second Winston Cup championship. I gotta put it up front. is concerned there is absolutely no pressure on Dale Jarrett and his team they have third place locked up they have nowhere to go but to the front and that's exactly what they plan to do this is the car that has won two races for them this year at Charlotte and at Michigan DJ 99 points behind Terry Labonte he's a long shot but hey last night Evander Holyfield was a long shot too and look what happened in the fight ring he beat Mike Tyson Todd Parrott, Dale Jarrett's crew chief, also told me with the kind of year that we've had winning all the big races, if we leave here with the Winston Cup championship, it wouldn't surprise me. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, welcomes you live to Atlanta Motor Speedway and the 31st and final NASCAR Winston Cup race of 1996, the Napa 500. It's a beautiful day, the stands are filled, and we're going to determine who the champion is here in the next few moments. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to the final race of the year. Everything that has happened up to this point in the Winston Cup season has been preliminary. It all comes down to the next 328 laps. The point standings, there you see the three in contention for the championship. Fourth and fifth separated by 35 points. Seven through 10 separated by 99. No position in the top 25 is locked up. 20 can advance, and all 25 can either advance all four back, fall back from their position during today's race. Ned, we're down to it. Yes, we are down to it, Bob. It's going to be an exciting afternoon here 
battling for that championship. And you know, every driver that's battling for it, those three that have a chance at the championship, they got to do what they've been doing all year long. What's got them there? They can't afford to go out there and stroke and be conservative. They've been conservative to a degree all year long. That is in trying to keep themselves out of trouble. They got to do that today, but they got to run up front. Then. And we keep talking about Terry Labonte has to run eighth or better to win the race of Jeff Gordon with. Terry Labonte has to finish this race. He has to run 500 miles. If Gordon and Dale Jarrett are there at the end of the race, and Terry Labonte has trouble with just two laps to go, he can lose this championship. And that's a tough part, running 500 miles. Cars are on the speedway. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for today's race. A very interesting starting lineup on the pole. Bobby Labonte with a speed of 185.887. Jeff Gordon, second in point, starts alongside. Second row, Terry Labonte, the points leader, and Mark Martin, who's looking for his first win in 1996. Dale Jarrett, the other points contender, will start from the inside of the third row, flanked by his teammate Ernie Irvin. Then Todd Bodine and Greg Sachs make up row number four. The fifth row, the most recent winner in the series, Bobby Hamilton and Chad Little. Hut Strickland will start in row number six along with Jack Sprague. The seventh row, Bill Elliott and Gary Bradbury. Row number eight, Rick Mast and Johnny Benson Jr., the rookie of the year. Seven-time Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt starts in the ninth row with Robert Presley. And the tenth row is Brett Bodine and Lake Speed. And 11th row, Joe Nemechek and Billy Standridge as the cars go down the front row, row 12. Ward Burton and Elton Sawyer, that's the Harry Rainier car, row 13. Bobby Hillen and Ricky Craven, row 14. Randy Baker and Ricky Rudd. In the row 15, Loy Allen and Rusty Wallace. Row 16, we find John Andretti and Wally Dallenbach. Row number 17 is Michael Waltrip and Sterling Marlin. Row 18, Ted Musgrave and Dave Marcus. Row 19, Darrell Waltrip, last year's pole winner here, and Jeff Bodine. Row number 20, we find Ken Schrader and Jeff Burton. Of course, they both used provisionals to get in the field. And uh, the row 21, of course, are provisionals as well. Jimmy Spencer and Morgan Shepard. And we had some top-name drivers load up and head for home, failing to make the race, including Jeremy Mayfield, Ron Barfield, Dick Trickle, Kenny Wallace, Derek Cope, and Kyle Petty. Each of those drivers failed to qualify fast enough to get into the field and had no provisionals available or were lower than others who were eligible for provisionals. Well, there are some very key people in this race here today. Those are the spotters that will be in radio communication with their drivers, telling them where the activity is on the racetrack and guiding them through these 328 laps. And making sure that they're when they're alongside traffic, as they come off the corner, they don't go up and squeeze that guy on the outside into the retaining wall or going in the corner if someone's on the inside and making sure they don't run that card on the apron and causing that car to spin. Here's Dale Jarrett's onboard camera. Third in points going in. A shot at the championship today if things go right for him and wrong for Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte. Here is Jeff Gordon, who's going for his second straight NASCAR Winston Cup championship, trying to become the only driver who has won two Winston Cup championships. Mark Martin won four times in 1995, is winless in 1996. He has been so close on occasion this year. He's looking for his first victory lane of the season. Kenny Schrader will leave the Rick Hendrick team at the end of this year. He had to take a provisional to get in the race and starts from the rear field back in row number 20. Brett Bodine could use a boost. He got a boost earlier this week when he found sponsorship for his effort in 1997. So he has at least a psychological drive for this race this afternoon. Loy Allen Jr., the last ride for the car sponsored by Health Source. He would like to bring home a victory here today for that sponsor. And then we see Rusty Wallace in the two car. Another driver who's had trouble the last few races. Had five victories in 1996, but none recently. Michael Waltrip, another one of those drivers who has yet to visit victory lane. In fact, in his career, he's sporting some different colors this year, or this race, rather. It's a silver car, and that's being done in conjunction with a movie that we will tell you about a little bit more. 
Jeff Burton missed the field here in the spring after a uh, good run at Daytona. He has a lot to prove here today. Jeff Burton ready to go in the Napa 500. And here is Rusty Wallace, one of those guys who's fighting for a position in the point standings. He'll finish in the top 10, but would like to move up a position here this afternoon. See these fellows weaving back and forth, weaving back and forth, trying to get some flex in those sidewalls. Trying to loosen those tires up just a little bit as Jeff Gordon back and forth and to make sure that all the debris that could be on those treads of those tires are off. You know, you wonder what's going through the driver's mind right now, Ned, but uh, race drivers tell me that they're most comfortable when they get in the car, they get fired, they get the visor down, and they get ready to go racing. This is the moment they've been looking for, no doubt about it, and probably the most relaxed they've been in a little while, especially when they come around this time and get that green flag. Looking ahead, we have the Labonte brothers right ahead of Dale Jarrett. And, uh, of course, it's very important to lead a lap. Jeff Gordon that you see up there on the outside of the front row would like very much to get those five points early leading the first lap so that he could be that much closer to the championship. On the other hand, Terry Labonte would like for his younger brother to let him go around and be the first to lead. This is going to be a very, very critical board first corner. Who's going to get those five bonus points the first time by? The green flag is out. The Napa 500 is underway. The championship at stake. lap was turned by Terry Labonte. He is definitely gaining on his brother. He picked up the draft, and drafting very definitely plays a part here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway because of the speeds they run, close to 200 miles an hour on the straightaway. Those two are pulling away from the rest of the field, separating themselves from Jeff Gordon and the others. They come off the corner and still no attempt to take the lead, but now Terry may have a good run. I think coming off the turn two or down the back stretch, I think he'll take the lead. Bobby Labonte, the 18 car, has got to go up the racetrack. And here comes Terry. He's got a run on him. And dives in the corner. Looks like he's going to be able to lead this lap. No, 
ought to be surprised there. He's got both of them have great race cars, but as we said, Bobby's not going to fight his brother. He wants him to get those five bonus points. Terry Labonte is one step closer to winning the championship with five bonus points for leading in a good battle for third as Jeff Gordon tries to hold off the advance of Mark Martin. He's not going to be able to do it. As a matter of fact, here comes Ernie Irvin, and Jeff Gordon is going backwards. And Dale Jarrett comes as well alongside. And here comes Greg Sachs right up there behind him, too, in the Ford car. Greg Sachs driving the car that would be normally driven by Robbie Gordon. He's at the Baja 1000 off-road race today and is not here at Atlanta. Eight laps completed. Terry Labonte is the leader at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Back at Atlanta Motor Speedway, defending Winston Cup champion Jeff Gordon has a problem. Gordon said the car is vibrating. It's got worse and worse and worse. And now we can see the left rear tire has worked its way loose. Actually, the jacks have already changed right side tires. And now as caution being shown on the speedway, to an incident involving the car number 29. The problem continues here. Gordon in the pits. He now goes one lap down as Bobby Labonte goes by. They will change all four tires and Bob a tough break for Jeff Gordon and a tough break also for Robert Wrestling. A heartbreaking situation for Jeff Gordon and it came so early in the race. He's now a lap down but we are under caution and it is because of the 29 car driven by Robert Presley. We have the tail end of it over the back stretch to see if we can determine what happened. Looks like he got too high and goes up and I tell you what, I don't know that he hit the wall. They might just barely, there is some a dark mark up there where the tire just might have brushed the wall. But Ned, did he do a great job? Boy, that, and a lot of other drivers did too. He came right down through the middle of a lot of race cars. That could have been a big wreck. Jerry, tell us more about Jeff. This is the left rear tire off Jeff Gordon's DuPont Chevrolet. Take a look here at these lug nut openings. Ordinarily, they would be round, but you see they're oval here. What's happened, this wheel has worked its way loose and begun to bounce up and down, and actually the stud here has allowed this opening to vibrate back and forth. This wheel, whole tire, was bouncing and vibrating. They came in and made a change, but they lost a lap, and of course, this could possibly cost this team a shot at a million and a half dollars. That's kind of an unusual thing to happen so early in the race, huh? It really is. Unbelievable. And he actually went two laps down shown as two laps down but don't count them out yet there it's, it's very possible to make up a couple of laps here it's been done before so although Jeff has suffered a setback he is not out of championship contention back in a moment we are under caution at the moment however set to go back to racing and in fact the green flag is out Jeff Gordon was in again, and he now starts from the inside, and doesn't look like it's running much better, Jerry. Well, they told Jeff Gordon to be very, very careful. He is now two laps down. They brought him back down pit road a moment ago, changed the right rear, and checked the left rear. They torqued every single lug nut. I asked Ray Evans, and said, hey, we torqued them all before we left the garage this morning. We're not sure what the problem is. That may not be the whole problem. Maybe something else is going in. I thought we told Jeff to be very, very careful for a couple of laps. Well, he's got some fresh tires right now. We can see that he clearly is the fastest car on the racetrack as he goes by Terry Labonte. Now, if you catch Bobby, get in front of him, and the caution flag should wave. He'll get one of those two laps he's back. As of right now, Jeff Gordon has slipped back to third position in the point standings, and Dale Jarrett has moved up one. We will, of course, track the championship for you throughout the afternoon, so you'll know who not only is leading the race at the moment, but who is the championship leader at the moment. The car, the, one of the cars on the move is the black three of Dale Earnhardt, who started 17th, and he's up to 8th. Circuit City car, and also Greg Sachs giving a good ride to the first Union Pontiac today. And here's Gordon getting one of those wow. laps back. Boy, it didn't take him long to run Bobby Labonte down. It sure didn't. That car is all right now. Remember now, under NASCAR rules, that the caution comes out now, the pace car picks up the leader, Terry Labonte, and Jeff Gordon gets to go around the whole racetrack and get one of his two laps back. 
So right now, I think that Jeff Gordon would just try to stay in front of the 18 car. There's no point in trying to make up a mile and a half on the green flag. Just stay there and hope for a caution flag. That's exactly right. He does need to over the car. Remember back in November of 1992, a young man named Jeff Gordon made his first NASCAR Winston Cup start here. Last year, he clinched his first championship here, and today he's going for number two. Don't forget what Randy LeJoy did a week ago at, at Homestead. He got involved in a wreck early, trying yep. to win the Bush Championship. Got a lap down. Everybody thought it was all over with. Got back in the lead lap, worked his way up there, and came back and won the championship. Bobby Hill is in the 77. Sterling Martin in the four cars. They go to the inside of Gary Bradbury. There are the speeds, and you can see that the 179.4 uh, mile an hour lap is the faster by the leader, Bobby Labonte. Sits up the racetrack and several cars get by. Jeff Burton, one of those cars that was able to drive by. Burton has worked his way up to 24th position. And that's the perspective out the back of Rusty Wallace's car. The 29 of Robert Presley is back on the racetrack. 10 laps down. And we here's a crash on the back stretch. Todd Bodine in the 33 car got some damage and the 58-52 car of Jack Sprague and is there going to be a caution? There got to be, there has to be debris on the racetrack. But no caution at the moment. Here is both Sprague and the Bodine still running on the racetrack but a lot of crumpled fenders and you would think that there would be debris on the racetrack but NASCAR is showing no caution at the moment. And while we see Todd Bodine lose control, I'm sorry. There is Spray going into the pits, trying to get some of that crumpled sheet metal uh, away from the tires to prevent him to go back into competition. Boy, a great qualifying performance by Jack. Now let's take a look at the replay. It happened on the back stretch. This is what I thought about just a moment ago. That's Todd Bodine. Might have been just a little bit of contact between Sprague and Bodine. Bodine goes around and Frag runs into the cars and look at these cars now. They're going to Todd Bodine is going to save this car. He's not going to run into the inside wall. Wow, that was a great job of driving by Todd Bodine and, for that matter, Jack Spray. Now Todd Bodine is in the pits, getting some. Let's go to the pits and John Kearns. A lot of front end damage on Todd Bodine, and they were hoping for a good run today after qualifying so well. The nose is pretty much torn away. What they're going to try and do is tape it back, and Ernie Irvin just getting around Terry Labonte out on the racetrack, but the crew will have to tape what's left of the nose together. Todd will go back out and run just simply four laps. Let's go to Bill Weber. Jack Sprague sits in his car on pit road, hood up, heavy right front damage. They're going under the hood to see if they can't make some repairs under there. But Sprague, who had hoped for a very good day after a great qualifying effort, sits on pit road as the field charges by. So the work continues on the Jack Sprague and Todd Bodine cars, both hoping to get back out there. Meanwhile, it is Bobby Labonte continuing to lead. Ernie Irvin, as you heard, took over second position from Terry. Mark Martin is fourth, and Dale Jarrett is fifth. Jeff Gordon is a lap down. The Napa 500, 29 laps old at Atlanta Motor Speedway. As we wrap up the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season, there is the leader of the race, Bobby Labonte. Running right behind him, Ernie Irvin and Terry Labonte. There are the uh, top 10 positions at the moment with 298 laps to go. Again, Jeff Gordon lost two laps, has gotten one of them back at the moment, and is the fastest car on the racetrack as we speak. Here's a Napa field summary that will show you where everybody is running at the moment. This car for Dodd comes back down pit road. And Jack Sprague, the 52 car, uh, is behind the wall. Those two cars involved in the incident over on the back stretch a few laps ago that did not result in a caution. This is Rusty Wallace's car as he looks forward at Jeff Bodine's QVC Ford as he goes down in turn one. The 
Watch that road go by, folks. That's what 200 <laughs> miles per hour looks like, about an inch off the ground. Rusty has moved from uh, 30th up to 23rd. Spencer that we saw Jeff Bodine go by. Bobby Hamilton has passed Dale Jarrett for fifth place. So Bobby moving up through the pack a little bit. He started in the ninth position. followed by Sterling Marlin. Jeff Burton in the Exide car trying to get by Bobby Hillen. That's the 77 of Hillen. And that is for 17th position as Burton tries to take it away from Bobby Hillen. Looks like he's going to be successful here as they come out of the second corner and onto the back stretch. Yep, the 99 goes into 17th spot. up a couple more spots. He just took over seven a lap ago. And Jeff Burton caught the group in front, and there's Dick Michael Walker. There's the lead of the race. Bobby Labonte, Interstate Batters, and we can say Chevrolet today for the last time. Next year, that will be Pontiac. Joe Gibbs' team going to Pontiacs. They've run Pontiacs in the NHRA for a couple of years now, and Joe's going to Pontiac for Winston Cup also. Now Terry Labonte comes back up on Ernie Irvin to battle for second spot. Behind him is Mark Martin. There's Mark. Morgan Shepard, who's in his last ride in the 75 car. He's back in 34th spot. And John Kernan is with Jack Sprague. And Jack was one of those involved in the incident on the backstretch a few laps ago. Jack Sprague is in the garage area. A lot of damage. And uh, Jack, last week he won out Las Vegas in the truck, but this week a premature and what happened? that bad it's just cosmetic but we're not in it for the points or anything i was just passing todd there for 10th and uh apparently a spotter went on break i don't know but uh that's race 
so when that stuff happens. It looked like we were going to have a good day. We could run 10th, 11th. They're pretty comfortable, and uh, we knew we could get it freed up a little bit, but uh, it's just a little too early to be racing quite that hard. And, uh, you know, he was holding me up pretty good, and I figured he wouldn't put up a big battle getting by, but he did, and this is what happens, and that's the way it goes. But I'd just like to thank Rick and everybody at Henry Motorsports for the opportunity. We've had a great year. I guess, guys, that's what you could say. That's racing. That is racing, and somebody who is really racing out there is Jeff Burton at number 99. He has moved up to 12th position. He started 40th. Wow. How about that? Obviously, the car does not qualify very well, but racing, great. <laughs> Had to take provisional to get in the race. And John Kernan has more. Well, you know, we always talk about how Atlanta Motor Speedway is a super speedway. Well, that car that Jeff Burton is in is a short track car. His crew chief, Buddy Parrott, told me, hey, we're bringing the car that ran so well at Richmond a couple of months ago. And Caution is out on the racetrack. That will help Jeff Gordon get back one of his laps. But that is a short track car that Burton has. Buddy Parrott says, hey, on the long runs, it's going to be fast as lightning. You can see the reason for the yellow. There is caution on the racetrack. It's just past the start-finish line, and it belongs to Lake Speed's car. What happened? Can we tell from this angle? Let us see. Looks like Jimmy Spencer goes up and makes Whoa. a little bit of contact, or yep, knocks the bumper off. Yep. And so that is one of the breaks that Jeff Gordon needed. Now makes up the complete lap. As the caution comes out on the racetrack. See now, folks, the, the pace car is in front of the 18 car. There he is, and the 18 car right behind him. And Jeff Gordon is, meanwhile, just driving all the way around the racetrack and catching up with the field, making up almost a mile and a half. Now, yeah. Terry Labonte had really gotten fast there. Those last five laps, he had passed Ernie Irvin back and was catching his brother, Bobby Labonte. So Terry's car was really getting good there. But everybody will be coming into the pits now. Here they come. Here they come. First service of the day on pit road as Labonte, Labonte, Urban, Martin, and others come down for their first stop. Here is Bill Weber. Waiting for Dale Jarrett to bring his quality care forward on the pit road. Mark Martin slides by first. Now Jarrett is here. This will be four tires and fuel. They're going to make a chassis adjustment. They were also going to make a track bar adjustment. But DJ said, no, we tried that. It didn't work out. So they'll try and do it with Wedge. The Labonte brothers are in, and Jerry is there. Right side tires already going on. Bobby and Labonte, they will tighten their car up slightly with an adjustment in the left rear. Bobby is down and away. Terry also now pulling out just behind the car 94 of Bill Elliott. They head back to turn one. Everyone comes out from the pits after having completed their first service of the day. We are going to take a break. 45 laps have been completed here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We are under caution because of debris on the racetrack from Lake Speed's car. The back bumper torn off in contact with Jimmy Spencer. Stay with us for more of the Napa 500. There is Jeff Gordon. He's now one lap down, and he will be able now to pull to the inside of the long line of cars on the lead lap and get an opportunity to get his second lap back. Jerry? That could be an omen for that DuPont team. They made one lap up on the racetrack rather easily, and now they came in, put four tires on, one can of fuel, and as you said, Bob, that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to be up alongside the lead cars and have a shot at pulling off and getting back that lap. We'll check in with John Kernan. Jerry, I'm up with Rusty Wallace's pit. He's been in for the second time. The problem is in the right front bumper, something, some piece of debris out there on the racetrack came through and punched a hole in it. So the crew has been busy taping up that hole. They'd like to be able to put and pop rivet a piece of aluminum over it to keep the air out of there because if air gets through that hole up into that right front, it's going to cause the car to push in the turns. But right now, all they've been able to do is put a bunch of that 200-mile-an-hour duct tape on it to patch it up. So we'll see if that works. But Rusty is way back in the field. Getting set for the restart of the race, there is Dale Jarrett. Again, he is currently second in the points because of the misfortune experienced by Jeff Gordon. But we're a long way from the end of this race and the determination of who wins the Winston Cup. The green flag comes back out. Jeff Gordon slides up between Bobby Labonte, the leader of the race, and second place Ernie Urban in his pursuit of another lap. 
Bobby Hillens crew, he came out in sixth place on that pit stop. He had a great pit stop. I don't know if he just changed two tires or what. Dale Earnhardt's about to pass him. You see on the right of the screen there, but they did have a great pit stop. Bobby Hamilton made it quick in and out. Jerry White. Bobby came back in. Lobby Loomis said the 28 team in front of him left a tire on pit road, and Bobby hit it, leaving the pit, hitting the front air dam. They had to come back in and pull it back out. That cost them a lot of track position. Jeff Gordon is trying to get his second lap back, and he does. Sliding up ahead of the lead of the race, Bobby Loomis. Impressive performance here after the misfortune by Jeff Gordon. He's still remember, though, back in 36th position, but he is back at the tail end of the lead lap. 35 cars on the lead lap. side by side is letting Jeff Gordon just pull away from him. Bobby Labonte is eligible for $136,800 in Unical bonus money. The Unical bonus has never been won here in Atlanta. Jeff Gordon was the most recent winner of it at Pocono. Now Dale Earnhardt did win the poll. Oh, crash, crash. Randy Baker crashes. That will bring out the cautions out and Jeff Gordon is back in the lead lap. Yes, he is. There is Jeff Gordon at the end of the backstretch. He's well ahead of those back of him that are battling for position. Look at Dale Earnhardt try to come up to third spot on the inside of Terry Labonte. Let's watch this battle off the corner and see who goes where for the restart as the caution comes out. Gordon's back on the lead lap. Ernie Irvin, the leader of the race now. Wow. How about that? Give yourself a hand, guys. Pat yourself on the back. Here's Jerry. Well, you would think they just won a championship down here at the DuPont Fitz. They were high-fiving, jumping around. And a moment ago, Ray Everham said, now, let's go win a championship. <laughs> what a story it would be here today if they can pull off that feat. My goodness. It looked bad for Jeff in the early going, falling two laps down, but he has already made up to two laps, and we're only 53 circuits into this event. Here's the crash that has brought out the caution. Right at the top of your screen, the car is smoking. And then all of a sudden, the car goes sideways. When he tries to correct it, it goes sideways again and comes up. He's going to back in the fence right there. And the debris slides down the racetrack along with Randy Baker. There we see the debris sliding across. No other car involved, however. Ernie Irvin has the advantage now over Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, and Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon catching up to the rear of the field. He made another pit stop, but this has certainly been an impressive situation involving Jeff Gordon. This could be the most pivotal point of the race right here with a crash involving Randy Baker. There we sit right on the top. Caution came out. Jeff made up his second lap. Here's Jerry. What a break for Jeff Gordon. They got back on the lead lap, but most importantly, the concern is that tire worked loose in the very early part of the race. They had stripped a stud on the left rear wheel. They wanted to have a chance under caution to come in before it got loose again and use a thread chaser. Now, what a thread chaser is, is a device that goes and back basically re-threads the stud. They came in, pulled the left rear wheel off, put the thread chaser on, and re-threaded the top stud on the wheel put a lug nut back on now they're hoping and praying that it will stay tight for the rest of the day and jeff gordon now moves up into the 29th position for the restart of this race which will come momentarily in the meantime though we'll take another break from atlanta motor speedway 
race car pulls off the racetrack, set to go back to green at Atlanta. Bobby Hillen running up in seventh position, only took two tires on that pit stop. He's got some great track position. He was sixth, he's now seventh, so still hanging up there. Black car in the right side there. Bobby's got the body ready to drive deep into that corner, but look there on the right of your screen is that black car, Dale Earnhardt, all the way up to fourth there now, and he's on the move. He has eight wins here at this racetrack, the most among the active drivers. Jeffrey F. Noonan practiced Dale Earnhardt, has some contact with another driver. They had to change a ball joint, two tie rod ends. They also changed two springs, a sway bar, one shot. A lot of changes on that three car, but here comes Jeff Gordon. Trying to march his way back to the front as he goes by Loy Allen. The Napa Field Summary will show you where everybody's running, including Jeff Gordon. Goes in right on the back bumper that said go forward. Right on the back bumper, trying to get by. Can't do it. See Bill Elliott right behind him. Well, he made up the two laps, but it isn't going to be quite so easy for Jeff to go up through the field now, but he's got a lot of time to do it. That's the thing that's in his favor. He has lots of laps. He made up those two laps and let in about uh, 50 laps. And, but yes, he has a lot of cars to pass now, but. The good thing in his mind is, hey, I've already outrun the best in this field here twice. So. Let's uh, mention Billy Standridge here while we have the opportunity. When we went off the air last night after happy hour over on ESPN2 as the battle for the lead rages on, Standridge had crashed. They took him to the hospital. Bobby Labonte goes to the lead. They talked, took him to the hospital, checked him over. He was released. He's in the race driving a backup car from Loy Allen. Loy Allen's backup car. In 37th position, one lap down to the standard. And so Bobby Labonte has reassumed command of this race with Ernie Irvin running second, then Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. With Mark Martin then next, and in sixth position is the 88 car of Dale Jarrett. He's hanging on. He's there right he there. The car seems to still be a little bit tight. I watched him in the corners a little bit, and it's not uh, exactly like it needs to be. I think it's better than it was before, but... Uh, Still seems to be a bit tight. Well, he's not exactly in the race right now, but he can certainly see it. Yeah, he can see what's going on in front of him. Can Larry Irving trying to get alongside of Bobby Labonte. Could, well, couldn't quite make it. Bill Weber has more on uh, Dale Jarrett. And Dale Jarrett's car was tight exiting the turns, and that's what they wanted to make the adjustment for on that last pit stop. They did it with tire pressure, and they also made a little wedge adjustment. Dale was pulling, that freed up the car, and he's running a little better. And the tire temperatures seemed to back that up. They showed he was 5 to 10 degrees tight on the right front tire. But so far, they're happy with the adjustments. They're going to plan to make another tire pressure adjustment on their next stop. And the one car chasing DJ on the track and marching toward the front of the field. Yeah, he just moved into seventh position, Rick Mask. Yeah, that's seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh as the 77 car of Hillen gets kicked back to 11th spot. Those two tires are probably beginning to hurt Bobby a little bit now. The newness has worn off of the right side tires, and, and uh, that definitely is going to hurt him. I received Jeff Burton, the 10th place car. Here's Mark Martin trying to take over that fourth spot from Dale Earnhardt. And to see Terry Labonte right in front of these fellas. 
As we told you earlier, Mark Martin can knock Dale Earnhardt out of fourth place in the point standings this afternoon with a good, better finish than Dale Earnhardt. He's only 35 points behind Earnhardt coming into this race. And boy, every position is worth a little bit more money, in some cases a lot more money. Yeah, up towards the top. Yeah. It, it, it changes dramatically up there, like 100,000 per spot. Jeff Burton has picked up another spot. Here comes Bobby Hamilton to the inside of Bill Elliott. You see the damage to the right front on Hamilton's car. There was Mark Martin on the inside of Earnhardt. That's for Ford. Oh, didn't get it done. Earnhardt drove her down in there, didn't he? Earnhardt's car seems to be extremely strong on the fresh tires. The difference between fourth and fifth in the point standings is $30,000. Is that all? I thought it was more than that. But it really falls off at fourth yeah. position. There's a million eighty thousand difference between first and second. That's quite a drop. Yeah, from a million five to four twenty. Here comes Dale Jarrett. He's gaining on these fellas, closed in on the back bumper of Mark Martin. But guess who is threading his way up through the field rather quickly? Jeff Gordon. No big surprise. It's up to 22nd. Since the restart, 31st, and now up to 29th spot. 22nd. 22nd, I'm sorry. And back to get another one here from Jeff Bedai. Yep. Not quite. Jeff Gordon had problems early. He's made up the two laps. Bobby Labonte is at the head of the field here in the Napa 500. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Atlanta Motor Speedway for the grand finale of the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season, the Napa 500. It's Bobby and Terry Labonte at the front of the field. Then Ernie Irvin, and then we have this trio led by Dale Earnhardt. Martin got it beside of Earnhardt a couple of laps ago, but couldn't make the pass. I think Mark Martin just has decided to back off now, follow Earnhardt, keep his tires as cool as he can. Yeah, you can use those tires up in a hurry trying to pass someone. Get down the inside and pinch it down and scrub those tires, build up the heat on Especially this racetrack with a corner, each corner, one and two and three and four, are one half mile long. The, the straightaways here are only one quarter mile long. So this racetrack, long, long corner. The 99 car of Jeff Burton continues to be very, very impressive. He is now up to seventh position. John? And as we look at the lap charts of the team's keep here, Buddy Parrott says that Jeff is two of a second a lap faster than the leader and they're still not satisfied with the car yet in fact on the next pit stop we expect him to take four tires and jeff wants them to raise the track line to prevent the help of the handling of the car they want it perfect by the end of the day and there goes jeff as he tries to get around rick bass yeah that is for seventh position so jeff is now in seventh rick back to eight spot side of the racetrack as Michael Waltrip comes below and also Rusty Wallace. Lake Speed is back in that pack too without that rear bumper. Hanging right in there with him. In the battle also is Loy Allen. Loy Allen takes a look at Bill Elliott as he comes Turn two. Elliott 28th, Loy 29th. Loy and that team looking for sponsorship for next year? Yep. Several uh, announcements were made over the uh, weekend. We'll tell you about as the race goes along. Terry Labonte in second position and 
Jeff Gordon continues to come up through the field and pick off positions. He moves back into second position in the point standings. But he's got a long way to go to win this title. Now Terry has lost, caught his younger brother Bobby. Bobby had moved out to about a 15 car length lead, but now Terry is right there with him. He wants to go there and lead some more laps. He is the only one of the three point contenders who has led a lap so far today. And here might be the time. No, nope, can't quite make it. this time. So Terry goes back to the front of the field. And here's Schrader and Waltrip and Brett Bodine and others. Brett, Brett Bodine was in front of that group a minute ago. Yeah, and he's one of those who announced a sponsorship for 1997. Catalyst Communications and Frontier Communications will sponsor Brett Bodine for 1997. And boy, when you walked through the garage area yesterday and saw some faces that normally were uh, with frowns because of their sponsor hunt. Brett had a big smile on his face all weekend. It was good to see him get that locked up. A three-year deal, so his uh, future seems to be secure as far as the sponsors are concerned. Now he just worries about getting that race team more competitive, which they're determined to do. Bobby Hamilton running to the inside of Brett. I mean, that's some really good race cars in that group. And Bobby Hamilton was a, you know, he was a real good race car up there running at the front before he had to make that extra pit stop during the caution, got back there in the pack. And as you mentioned, it is tough to come back up through the field. And you can see the damage to the right front nose on Bobby Hamilton's car where he hit that tire. And obviously that's making a difference on the handling performance of the Pontiac. who had to take a provisional to get into the lineup here today. He's up to 22nd position. And he's 23rd now. <laughs> well, okay, you're right, 22nd. <laughs> Whatever. Here goes Mark Martin trying to make the pass on Dale Earnhardt. And once again, Earnhardt fights back on the outside. He's got that momentum going. He drives her hard down in the corner, stays ahead of Mark Martin. Dale Earnhardt has not won a race in the last 26, his longest winless streak since joining Richard Childress Racing. Kind of slipped there in the third turn, does he? And Mark might have it this time. Yep. He just might have the position. And here's Jeff Burton has caught Dale Jarrett and moved around and taken over the sixth position. That 99 car is on the move. It sure is. And Dale Jarrett doesn't uh, need to lose positions here in his points battle. But again, as you can see, we've got a long way to go. 242 laps remain. Top five at the moment, Terry Labonte, Bobby Labonte, Ernie Irvin, Mark Martin, and Dale Earnhardt. Those are the top five. Seven laps are completed here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Back after these messages. Thanks, Linda. Back at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and Jeff Gordon continues to come up through the field. He's now up to 16th position, but the current NASCAR Winston Cup points leader, Terry Labonte, is the leader of the race and so at the moment the championship remains in the hands of Terry Labonte. So there you are the update on the quest for the cup. Terry Labonte currently first and he has a total of 4,677 points. Jeff Gordon is 16 and he needs to make up 112 points. He needs to gain 28 race positions to take over first in the standings. And how about 
Dale Jarrett. Well, he's passed uh, Dale Earnhardt and moved up to sixth spot. And here comes Hutt Strickland to also try to pass Earnhardt. Hutt Strickland is on the move in the Circuit City forward number eight. He has come from pretty far back to catch this back of cars. He was about straight away behind him about 15, 20 laps ago. And now he has run him down past Earnhardt and has caught Jarrett. We saw Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt racing so hard 15 10 laps ago and right now mark martin has just driven away he still runs in fourth place but earnhardt has dropped back to eight spots i think the longer he runs on his tires the more they get heated up and sort of carries him up the racetrack has trouble keeping it down Car of Jeff Burton could be the fastest car on the race track. Has moved up from the next to the last row, 40th spot. That's where he started this race from. And he's currently fifth. He is definitely gaining on the leaders too, Bob. Coming through some traffic and just motoring up there. You see Gary Bradbury in the 95 car, the Shoney Sport. As Jeff Burton drives by him. That's on Master Mark Martin. He's got to dispose of Loy Allen first. When you compare 1995 to 1996, Jeff Burton's name goes to the top. Last year, he was 32nd in points going into this race. This year, he is 15th. Jimmy Spencer was 27th last year, is 16th this year. And Dale Jarrett has gained nine positions from this time last year, from 12th to 3rd. much of a problem now. Can he catch his teammate, Mark Martin? Give him about five laps. Well, let's check the speeds now and see who's fastest out there. Well, it is Terry Labonte, but by just a little bit. But that that's on a given lap. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I still, Burton is gaining on him, so he's got to be, some laps has to be faster. So, you know, when we clocked that particular lap, he might have been passing a car or something and took a little bit off his feet. In fact, we did see him passing Loyal on that lap. By the way, Todd Bodine has been in and out again in the 33 car. He had contact earlier in the race and messed up his car. He's running back in 38th position, six laps down. Meanwhile, Burton oh, out there. Yeah, he yeah. out there by himself. He is the fastest car on the racetrack. Pit stop should be coming up in a few minutes. We'll take a break before they happen. Terry and Bobby continue to pace the field with Urban Martin and Burton, the top five. The championship is on the line here today in the Napa 500 at Atlanta. The three contenders, Dale Earnhardt, I mean, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, and Terry Labonte all going for the NASCAR Winston Cup, which will be presented in the New York City Waldorf Astoria Ballroom. We'll have it live for you on ESPN. Pit stops are occurring. We've seen Earnhardt, Martin, uh, Hutt Strickland has been in. Rick Mask, Ricky Rudd is in at the moment. The 40 car of Greg Sachs has been in as well. There's Ricky Rudd's crew going to work on the right side of his car. The 99 car of Jeff Burton relinquishes fourth position to come in. And look at the side-by-side -side battle between the... Oh, well, that's not Labonte. That is Marcus on the upside of uh, Terry Labonte. <laughs> this car's look a lot alike. Here's uh, Burton's pit stop. John. Right side tires already changed. They swing around to the left side. The car in traffic when another car's in front of it will get a little bit loose. They've decided not to make the track bar adjustment that they talked about. Instead, they added a half pound of air to both right side tires. A really good pit stop. Look at that 17.3. A great pit stop. Sterling Marlin's sixth position has come in for a stop. His work has been completed and he is moving once again. Ford Burton out of the 22 car. And it looks like all the leaders might be coming in right now. Dale Jarrett will probably stay out there and lead a lap. He should, at least. Here 
here comes Terry and Bobby and Ernie in all at the same time. But Dale Jarrett's not staying out there leading left. I thought surely they would. So they come down now for their second scheduled pit stop. The top four. Let's go to Jerry Punch in the Labonte pit. Scheduled pit stops. The brothers Labonte separated by seven years and eight and by seven yards on pit road. And then in front of them, Ernie Urban in the pit. No chance to adjust for Bobby Labonte. Right side tires going on the interstate batteries. Chevrolet. Now, Terry Labonte. They made an air pressure adjustment on Terry Labonte to try to get the car from being too tight. As Dale Jarrett is in, in front of you, Bill Weber. Four tires, fuel, they had trouble on the left front. Two rounds of wedge, or two rounds on the track bar. DJ, a fresh string, and he's away. We'll check out his pit stop. Jeff Gordon now getting ready to pit. He's on pit road. Coming your way, Dr. Punch. 55 miles an hour. And they really want to take a good hard look at the lug nuts on, that come off the left rear tire. The defending Winston Cup champions. And Gordon did indeed lead a lap, so that's very, very important that you're calculating at home. He now has those critical five bonus points. Right side tires going to the depart. Chevrolet through to the left side of the car number 24. And Jeff Gordon still getting served with getting it topped off with fuel. And now fuel spraying on the left side of the car. He is down off the jack and away. Rusty Wallace on pit road in front of John Curtis. And just a slight problem with Bill Wilburn on the left front tire as one of the lugs who just didn't want to go on right. So that cost him about a half a second to a second. But Rusty was in through four tires. It took a round to bite out of that car. And the guy that's going to be leaving this race when these quick pit stops are all finished is going to be Mark Martin. Bobby Hamilton slowing down and coming in for a green flag pit stop. And Michael Waltrip also is coming in. Jerry Punch awaits Bobby Hamilton. Well, our most recent winner in NASCAR Western Cup competition, the SCT Colors, this is the color of the 25th anniversary car. You saw this color in Daytona to begin the year, and they painted it again to finish the year. Slightly damaged right front nose where he beat that tire on pit road. And now he comes in for routine service. Right side tires going on, getting it full of fuel. Robbie Lewis and company working for King Richard Petty and driver Bobby Hamilton. Left front lock nut, left rear lock nut. No adjustment. He is off the jack, down and away. Pit stop of 20 seconds in duration for Bobby Hamilton as he returns to the speedway. The 99 car is once again making up ground on the speedway. He is, if not the, one of the fastest cars out there. Look at him pass Chad Little. Just, and he just blew by Terry Labonte a couple laps ago and since this out right now and Dale Earnhardt. The 11 car of Brett Bodine had the lead. However, he's come in for the stop now, John. They're busy changing the right side tires now on Brett Bodine's car. They're already finished. A little bit of a problem on the right front. A little bit of a problem on the right front. It looks like maybe the air gun, maybe a lug nut's got jammed into the air wrench. So this is really going to cause some problems for Brett Bodine's crew. Now they get that left rear tire change. NASCAR officials tell them they're missing a lug nut on the right front. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. After leading the race, staying out there, what? Problem one, tragedy for Brett Bodine. Yeah, chances are he's going to be a left down. He will be a left down, I believe, now. Very lengthy pit stop for Brett Bodine. And you can see uh, almost through the helmet how dejected he is, but you don't want to violate the speed limit going out. you got to keep your cool on the racetrack. Well, I'm sure he did. Because those situations are certainly going to happen. There we see Ricky Craven coming down pit road. Some contact early in the race. We see the damage on the right side. And wow, those were in the pit wall there for a moment. He was the leader when he came down pit road. Now Lake Speed is the only driver that hasn't made a pit stop. So he moves to the top of the leaderboard. And then Mark Martin will go back into the, or go into the lead. I think it's the first time today that Mark has led the race once Lake makes the pit stop. John, uh, tell us about the Brett Bodine problem. This is the air wrench. Now, when I depress the button, it's supposed to spin around. There's the button. You can hear the air. 
escaping is not spinning. The air wrench seized up, so quite a problem, but you hardly ever see this happen. At first, I thought it might have been a lug nut that got stuck, but no, the air wrench just seized up. Wow. Lake Speed has come in for his stop, and now the leader is Mark Martin. Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, and then Jeff, Boda, uh, Jeff Burton. And Burton is gaining on him, but Mark Martin is getting him some heavy traffic as he comes off turn four. The contenders, Terry Labonte is fifth, Dale Jarrett is eighth, and twelfth is Jeff Gordon. That's the way they stand at the moment with the second round of pit stops completed under green. 116 laps completed in the Napa 500. Napa 500, the Winston Cup finale for 1996 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, it was cool this morning here in Hotland. In fact, they were predicting snow flurries for some parts of this area, but we're going to heat up the winner for you in Tucson, Arizona. As for the second consecutive year, we present winter heat. And it's late model action like this that you're going to see. The late models, Southwest Tour, and the Winston West drivers will go at it beginning three weeks from today. Young drivers like Chris Trickle will be back. Winter heat, six races during December and January. The first on December 1st will feature the late models at 4 o'clock. The Southwest Tour on the 8th and the late models on the 15th. Couple of weeks for the holidays, then on the 5th of January. At 3 o'clock, the Southwest Tour, the late models back on the 12th, and we'll conclude winter heat with the first race of the Winston West season on the 19th. And look the second place car right now, Jeff Burton. The second, third Jack Roush car. And right now, Mark Martin is having all kinds of problems trying to get by Jeff Bodine. And John Kernan has an update. Well, as Jeff Burton tries to claw his way into the lead, just a small problem might be developing on that number 99 XI Ford. He radioed in a few laps after that last pit stop and told Buddy Parrott, we've got a problem. The engine is starting to miss just a little bit. They have then told Jeff, well, you might want to change ignition boxes, but then Buddy said, no, keep it where it is right now, because even with that little miss, you're still faster than the leader. Wow, that's pretty impressive. It really just is. Need, just need to get the miss out of how fast you'll be. <laughs> yeah. Here's Bobby Labonte going by Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine. The time has gone to lap down. Jeff Bodine is showing in 22nd position. Now there are 21 cars on the lead lap. And Earnhardt moving to the inside of Jeff Bodine. Here comes Bill Elliott in the 94. He, however, is a lap down in 23rd. So they'll be passing four position if Elliott can get around. And Jeff back Bodine. in tenth spot now, moving into the top ten, is Jeff Gordon. On Trouble. Track. Oh, we have a car in the wall. Joe Nemechek, I believe. You. Yes, it is. Joe Nemechek into the wall in turn number three. He's damaged the right side of his car. He keeps the car up toward the wall so as not to get in anybody's way in the low side of the banking. And the 99 car of Jeff Burton goes into the lead. He didn't have to agree on the racetrack. We see we make some contact at the Atlanta Motor Speedway, so I guess this problem started somewhere in the middle of the backstretch. Joe was one of those who announced uh, a deal, a sponsorship deal, uh, yesterday. He's going to, of course, uh, go in conjunction with Felix Sabatis and his Winston Cup car next year will be sponsored by Bell South. His uh, Bush car will be sponsored by Bell South Mobility. So the slowdown once again because of an accident here at Atlanta. Hadn't been too long since they pitted, but uh, trust me, they'll all they come back to the pits. <laughs> yeah, they will. Jeff Burton took the lead as they came down to the start and finish line to get the caution, and here they come. And he stops immediately. He's one of the first pits. I guess he is the first pit on pit road. Let's go down to Bill Weber. Waiting on Dale Jarrett, who just told his crew, just tires, the car's pretty good. First words of encouragement for him today. The 5, 24, and the 88 on your screen. DJ in. They're 
Gonna change four tires here. Go to the right side first. Again, tires only in fuel for Dale Jarrett. Their last pit stop was 19.5 seconds. Down pit road to Jerry Punch. Right side tires already have it gone on the car number five. And the 24, he smoked them coming in. He is cocked in. Left side tires now going on the car number 24. As the 88 is out of the way, here's the five leaving in 24, pitting at the far end is finally off the jacks. And up with the 24, beat him out 19.4 seconds for Jeff Gordon as they head back to turn one. Certainly the best of the three pit stops that we timed. Dale had a 21.7 and Terry a 23 and a half. So we'll see how they line up for the restart. It would appear that... Uh, I think Bobby Labonte only changed yeah. two tires. I think... Let's, let's see who, uh, how they came out. There's Earnhardt, there's, yeah, yeah. I believe that Gordon did beat the five out. Yeah, I think he did. Because he is positioned right at the blend line, uh, it does give him an advantage. All right, under caution here in Atlanta, we'll take another break. 126 laps are completed. Just about to complete the 130th lap, we go back to green on lap 131. It is again Bobby Labonte leading the race with Jimmy Spencer now running second. In third place is Ernie Irvin, then Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd. Our points contenders, while well, Terry Labonte is in eighth, Gordon is ninth, and Jared is tenth. Evidently, Spencer and Rudd only took on two tires. Uh, Got themselves some good track position. John Kernan? Jimmy Spencer came in there and took on fuel only because they tell me they only had 12 laps on that set of tires. So they decided to take a chance. Gave him some good track position. Now here's Jeff Gordon trying to move to the inside of Loy Allen. Who passed Terry Labonte there on the last lap. So Gordon is up to eighth right now. See Gordon, Labonte, and Dale Jarrett. Those are the three contenders for the championship, as you said, Bob. They're running eighth, ninth, and tenth. But as long as Terry Labonte can see the tail end of that 24 car, everything is fine as far as the championship is concerned. Yep. Gotta be careful going through this traffic of cars that are a lap down. expected to be released today. John Gill has a left uh, upper arm broken and two broken bones in his neck. Mickey Husband, unfortunately, the doctors had to amputate his left hand overnight in surgery. So our best to all the drivers, especially Mickey Husband. Jerry? Well, Mickey Husband underwent two hours of surgery. They tried everything they could to be able to save that left hand, and unfortunately, they had to amputate just above the hand at the wrist. But he is expected to be out of intensive care this morning. They called the hospital and into a regular room. He came through surgery well. You mentioned John Gill. Gill had a one-hour surgery yesterday at Georgia Baptist to repair the left humerus. That's the bone in the upper arm that was broken. Otherwise, his injuries were minimal. And as you said, Ron Burchette had a concussion. And he's expected to be released uh, earlier or later today. And I believe also Doc and Perry Tripp have some broken ribs that uh, they were treating yesterday. That's right, Bob. He broke his, his right seventh and eighth ribs on, on Perry Tripp. Otherwise, minimal injuries there. And Jeff Gordon, Bob, is beginning to make a move. Yes, he is. He has passed the seventh place uh, Jeff Burton. And so Jeff Gordon is now seventh. And we've seen just how fast that Jeff Burton has been all day long. Does that mean that Jeff Gordon might be just a little faster than Burton? And here he goes by Ricky Rudd, or trying to pass Ricky Rudd. He was two laps down at one time, and now he's right back in the thick of this thing. Jeff Gordon. He had made up 
his two laps in the first 50 laps of the race after things went bad right off the drop of the green flag. A bad vibration caused by some problems back in the uh, left rear tire area. But he is, has made up the two laps and now is in six spot. There are here it is. Yeah. Trying to get by the five car of Terry Labonte. He's alongside. Terry went by the point of this. He will. <laughs> Boy, that's how much I know about this business. Terry saw a good position up there on the outside. He saw Ricky Rudd up there and uh, passing the 99 car, so he just drove right on the ground. It looks like the, whatever problem that Jeff Burton had, ignition or what was causing his car to slight miss, is magnifying right now and getting worse. Yeah, there's no doubt that car right now looks like it might be on seven cylinders even. John, uh, did they switch ignition boxes? Yes, during that last caution, Bob, they switched ignition boxes, switched over to number two, and it didn't help with the miss, so they're back on the number one. Now, the problem that he's having right now is not in the engine compartment. It is with those four tires. They just occasionally, with these uh, radial tires, you just can get a mismatch set, and apparently that's the problem, because the car just does not want to handle. It's not the engine, it's the tires right now that's causing Jeff not to run as fast as he has. All these fellas are going on. Jeff Gordon is just driving away from this group. He's gotten by Jimmy Spencer. Right now, Jeff Gordon's up to fifth spot. And he was in the picture there with the other point contenders not too long ago, but now he's definitely out of the picture. He's driven away from them. There is Jeff, and look at the space he's been able to make up just in the last two, three laps. He has led a lap, so that gives him five bonus points. He started second. Look at where he was, though, on lap 14. He was in 42nd position. Not only that, he was two laps down. He's currently fifth. Made those two laps up and is in fifth spot, and there's fourth and third right in front of him. the leader of the race on the left of your screen, Bobby Labonte, who started from the pole position. Let's look at the interval, the amount of racetrack. There's second place, third, fourth, and fifth. Yep, fourth. So it's Labonte, Urban, Martin, Earnhardt, and Gordon here with 142 out of 328 laps completed. We'll be right back. Are you looking for really low prices on name brand computers like Compaq, IBM, and Mac? You need to visit the Computer Warehouse Outlet. 386 machines complete with monitors starting at $199. 486 machines with monitor, only $449. How about laptops starting as low as... Well, Jeff Gordon has passed both Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt, and Jeff has now worked his way up to third position, and that car is a rocket ship. It really is one and two that last time. It's like Mark Martin got loose or something, and Earnhardt had to back up because Mark was right directly in front of him, and Jeff Gordon just blew by both those cars. Here are the points right now, and look at the amount of money involved. Terry Labonte now has only a 32-point lead over Jeff and a 76-point lead over Dale. And look how that money drops off to one and a half million down to 420,000 for second place. Dale Earnhardt, as you can see, maintains his fourth place over Mark Martin. That's very close battle for the fourth position, position the points. And Dale Jarrett is 76 points behind Jeff Gordon. the drivers who would be on stage at the banquet if the race were to end right now and points were to be awarded. Let's take you through the top 25, however, that get uh, bonus money, and we see a lead change here as Ernie Irvin passes Bobby Labonte and goes to the front of the field. As I said, in the open, all 25 spots are not confirmed. 20 drivers can gain a position, and all 25 can lose a position, depending upon what happens here this afternoon. Ricky Craven currently in 
20th position, and there you see 21 through 25. As a matter of fact, uh, at Phoenix two weeks ago, 14 of the top 25 changed their positions, and Brett Bodine currently is in 25th in the point standings. Eligible for 25 grand. So Ernie Irvin is the leader now of the Napa 500 with Bobby second, and here comes third, Gordon. I believe that interval's closing then. Yeah, I think he's uh, he definitely, after he got around Dale Earnhardt and Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon is standing on the 28 car and the 18 car. Look how that car just sticks right in the corner the way he would need for it to. Doesn't move around. Robert Preston, the 29 car, he had some contact with Walt early on, the Cartoon Network car. Spent several laps with this, he now 20 laps down or so. Let's see how Gordon does in speed compares to the other. He's just a little bit faster than Bobby Lapani on that lap, 177.9 compared to 177.6. And Jeff has a nice, clean racetrack ahead of him. And look at Jarrett's time, 17 their speed, 178.006. Actually, Jeff Burton was quicker than that at 178.017. They're running right together back there. Jeff Burton got back around Dale Jarrett there a moment ago. So apparently those tires begin to seat in there. They come off to turn four. So they are turning some pretty good laps here right now. Look at Dale Earnhardt. He was the fastest that lap, just two tenths of a mile an hour faster than Jeff Gordon. is still very much at stake as Ernie Irvin leads this race, but Jeff Gordon now finds himself in third position. And Mark Martin is in fifth. Back after these messages. Stay with us. the leader of the Napa 500 here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, the 31st and final NASCAR Winston Cup race of 1996. Bobby Labonte runs in second position. Jeff Gordon has moved up to third, then Dale Earnhardt and Terry Labonte. And of course, that means Labonte still has the control of the championship. The third member of the contenders, that's Dale Jarrett, and he's running back in eighth spot. There is Dale Earnhardt, and there is the points leader, Terry Labonte, going for his second NASCAR Winston Cup championship. Man, he is in a perfect spot right now. You see, he's got cars, no cars right in front of him, no cars right behind him. He'd like to run the rest of the race exactly like this. Jeff is close enough ahead that he can see that 24, and as long as that uh, is in sight, he knows he's got the championship. Terry in sixth position is Mark Martin. And evidently, Mark Martin does not particularly like the tires that he has on his car right now. He's led the race today, has been very, very fast. Right now, is not making any headway towards the front of the field. And there comes Jeff Burton, another car who's been up front all day. Right now, not making any headway. Eighth, eighth place car, Dale Jarrett. It's Ward Burton. Ward Burton. And right behind him is the eighth car of Hutt Strickland. They've been battling back and forth. In fact, they switched that position a couple of times, Bob, in the last 10 laps. We have had 10 leaders in the first 161 laps of this race. 15 lead changes. Here is a battle for position between Jimmy Spencer and... Rick Mast. Yeah, I think that pit stop that Spencer made didn't take on any tires at all, even though he only had 12 laps on that set of tires. I believe it's beginning to hurt him right now. Battle for 11th and 12th. Right now, Spencer's in 11th. Rick Mast in 12th. Then comes Lake Speed, but he is a lap down in 21st position. Back 
shooting 14. Going into turn one, he looks like he'll hand him. Yes, he does. And then there's Lake Speed coming in there. Let's see where Lake Speed coming. He's a lap down. Yeah, he's a lap down. Okay. By the way, Jimmy Spencer is tied with Morgan Shepard for the longest streak of running at the end of a race in 1996. He started the streak back at Sears Point in May, and he has moved during that period from 23rd in the point standings up to 16th. Talking about Jimmy Spencer. Once again, a Heinz 57 field summary. There we see Jeff Gordon. He's closing up right on the back bumper of Bobby Labonte. He has caught the front two. He's just been inching up on him lap by lap, Benny. Since we last saw him, he was back to that little over a second. And you can see there that he's right there with him. What a phenomenal team that Rick Hendrick has put together with Jeff Gordon, Ray Everham, and the entire Rainbow Warriors. 10 wins in 1996. If you look at the uh, Heinz 57 field summary, remember the numbers and parentheses are starting position for that particular vehicle. And he takes over second. Jeff Gordon goes to second spot. Now sets his sights on the leader of the race, Ernie Herman. Now, there's still time for anyone to lead the most laps. They're going to have to pick up and lead a lot of laps from here on out because Ernie Irvin and Bobby Labonte have both led a lot of laps here We're today. Getting close to the halfway point, though. This is going to complete lap 167 coming up. Didn't we just pass the halfway point? Did halfway. we? Okay. Yeah. At one, one, uh, 64. Well, there's one of Jeff Gordon's crew members just uh, watching his driver move toward the front. There doesn't appear to be any uh, anguish in that pit right now. Would, would it be in your, if you, that was your pit? Uh, no. He started 42nd from lap 14, two laps down, and right now he's in second spot. Greg Sachs, the last car on the lead lap, just got passed, and so we have 19 cars on the lead lap. is the leader at the moment with the lap car in between himself and second place Jeff Gordon. Bobby Labonte runs third, Terry Labonte is fourth, and Dale Earnhardt is fifth. We'll be right back. It's ESPN Speed World today at Atlanta Motor Speedway in Hampton, Georgia, about 20 miles south of Atlanta, watching the Napa 500, the final race of 1996. Ernie Urban is your leader, Jeff Gordon second, Bobby Labonte running third, and this battle between Dale Earnhardt and Mark Martin is for sixth position, and Mark takes it. And and teammate, the sorry, Dan, teammate Jeff Burton just passed in the last lap to move in the fifth spot. It's, it's another long run, and Earnhardt's car just seems to go away as we get a lot of laps on those tires. It's pretty good for pretty good for, <laughs> so, <laughs> far, pretty, pretty good for about 15, 20 laps, and then just starts drifting back and coming out to Earnhardt's car. Here is the Bud Race recap. Ernie Urban, the leader, has led 36 of 173 laps. 15 lead changes, four caution periods, totaling 16 laps and ravaging almost 149 miles an hour. Take a look at those who have been out front today. Bobby Labonte. Oh, we got trouble up here. Oh, and Jeff Gordon was close to being involved in that accident, but he got the lead. And the caution comes out, and the car in trouble is who? Gary Bradbury? Yes, it looks that way. In turn number four, Bradbury spinning. And it was very close to those that were running up front. And so caution number five comes out on lap 176. Bradbury right there by pit entrance. So why not go down pit road? Yep. Good boy, Gary. Good plan. I tell you what, these West Cup drivers are absolutely the best drivers in the world. This guy spins up in the middle of the corner. They can't see, but just about 100 yards in front of them, and they all miss him. How in the world did they do that? All right, let's watch now Jeff Gordon. 
Ernie backs off because he can't see where he's going. Where's the car? Where's the car? And <laughs> Jeff Gordon Man. goes on the apron of the racetrack and goes by Ernie Irving to take the lead. Got down on the flat part of the apron and drove around Ernie Irvin, took the lead and avoided the crash. Here's how it looked from Jeff's perspective. Boy, he was blind there for a moment, wasn't Man. he? See what I'm talking about? Ernie Irvin couldn't see a thing. All right, pit stops now at hand as those on the lead lap come down. Here's John Kernan. Jeff Burton has the first pit stall. As you come down pit road, they will change four tires. They've decided two tires are not the way to go. No problems this time around. They've dropped the air pressure back on the right side tires back to where it originally was. Let's go down to Bill Weber. And Dale Jarrett is in for tires and fuel. They also will make a tire pressure adjustment down in the front. A half pound, a half pound up in the rear. Left side's going on to Jerry and Jeff Gordon pit. No adjustment for Jeff Gordon whatsoever. Right side and left side tires behind him. Ernie Irvin leaves after making the Jesse adjustment. It is Irvin, Bobby Labonte, then Jeff Gordon. Those are the first three off pit road. And Jeff's going to be, I believe, third on the restart there as both Ernie and Bobby got out ahead of him. Slowly down the back stretch under caution for the Gary Bradbury incident over in turn number four. We're 176 laps into this race. Let's take a break and be back with more from Atlanta Motor Speedway. No other premium price spark plug can take you there. Enter the performance zone only with split fire performance V spark plugs. Get your passing gear, you're gone. Split fire performance Vs mean more horsepower and better mileage. The difference in gas mileage has been fantastic. And now, the green flag is out to restart the race. Ernie Urban, get out of the pits first. He's in the lead. Off the track bar just slightly an eighth of an inch. It was also loose getting on the throttle, so they put a half around the wedge in the left rear. They're hoping both of the adjustments will help Ernie be able to get in the corner more comfortably and use all that motor to get off. Well, Ernie Irvin leading the race. Boy, what a incredible finish to the year it would be for him. But look at Jeff Gordon as he tries to get to the inside of. Labonte, several uh, awards will be handed out at the banquet, and at the moment, Ernie Irvin leads the AP Parts Meet the Challenge Award by 13 over Bobby Hamilton. That's worth $30,000, and it's the award given for advancing the first positions from start to finish. <laughs> Here's Jeff again. Nope. Bobby Labonte is trying to pass Ernie Irvin. In the meantime, he's trying to be passed by Jeff Gordon. We saw the glare of the turn three where the sun, these cars, when they drive at turn three, later in the race, will be driving into a setting sun. They hope some clouds will prevail before that happens. Been a mostly sunny day here this afternoon, although cool temperature was only expected to reach the 50s here in Georgia today. And as I indicated earlier, they were predicting some snow Take second from Lavani into 
turn one. Bobby Labonte could see that they were losing ground to the 28 car of Ernie Irvin, so he said, let Jeff go. We will race. We'll settle this later on. Let's go catch a 28 car. Terry Labonte is not far behind his brother, Bobby. There's Terry. And the 99 car is making noise once again as he's alongside Dale Earnhardt. About three laps ago, Dale Earnhardt passed Jim Burton for the fourth position. Burton came out in front of Earnhardt, but now the tire seems to be really coming in for Jeff Burton, so he's moving back around Earnhardt. Wow, good speed on that last lap for Hutch Strickland at 179.6. 179.6 for Terry Labonte appears to be the fastest of that last lap. And Mark Martin was running fifth when he went into the fifth, and right now he is running in 11th spot, well, at the 10th spot as he goes by ring last. And that, that last lap, Jeff Gordon was the fastest, over 180 miles an hour. And Mark Martin gained that position. That's the 10th spot. And Bill Weber has more. Well, Mark lost a few positions in the pit that last time. On the rear tire changer, they did have a lug nut get stuck in the gun, so it took a little longer on that pit stop. But he had told his crew a few laps earlier they needed to loosen the car up for him, but the car was too tight. Remember, Mark has not won a race this year. They think this car is capable of doing it, something you don't see very often. Mark Martin didn't finish final practice in the car on the track. He finished it doing interviews in the garage while the rest of the guys were trying to fine-tune their cars yesterday afternoon. He's up to ninth position, though. He goes to the inside and passes Hutt Strickland. Here we go up front. Jeff Gordon trying to move around Ernie Irvin. Looks like he's got him. Man, a great run off turn two. And you're right, Ned. He's got him. And Labonte goes along as well. The other Labonte back there, too. That one in that yellow red number five. He's coming right on up there, too. Boy, just some great racing here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway this afternoon. No holding back by anybody. No. That is right. And as Benny said at the beginning of the show, just because Terry Labonte is running in fourth position here, Jeff is in first, you got to stick around till the checkered flag drops because if these guys have a problem with just two laps to go, it could determine the championship. Ernie may have a problem, Jerry. He just radioed Larry McReynolds and said, in spite of what you guys did, which helped the car initially, once they got on my rear bumper, Gordon, I couldn't drive it. The car got to loose. I was actually afraid to run it hard in the corner. And now that they've gone by, he said the car has settled down. I thought they might have a car going down, but apparently it was just an aero problem with the air going off the rear spar. Let's go to Bill Weber. Jerry, a similar problem for Dale Earnhardt. I talked to David Smith. He said the tire buildup shows that Earnhardt is loose, but in traffic, in the turns, he has a bad aero push. They're trying to find a happy medium so they can figure that out to get Earnhardt back on his way. And Earnhardt right now is fighting to, to hold on to fifth position, and he's fighting with Dale Jarrett. Right now, Dale Jarrett is a little bit quicker than Earnhardt as Earnhardt goes in the corner, drifts up the racetrack. That's what he, Bill Weber's talking about by a push. He goes to the corner of the car, drifts up the racetrack. I got the fence that time, didn't he? <laughs> sure did. Well, Jarrett's car has been tight all day and pushing up coming off the turns. There Earnhardt goes up. Here's Jarrett up around this time. Yep. See, that time Earnhardt had to back off the gas. The push was so bad, and we could see that Jarrett got a great run and took the position away. Jared up to fifth position now. All three of your point leaders started in the top five, and now they are still in the top five. Yep. There's the interval between fifth place and the leader, Jeff Gordon, who is leading his 25th race of 1996. He led 29 of the 31 in 1995. We'll be right back. Rodson Racing Collectibles in Belleville has expanded its store.
caution out again here at Atlanta. Sixth of the afternoon, cars involved Loy Allen and Wally Dollenbach, and it's at the uh, head of main straightaway. Just coming off the turn four, they're down on the inside of the racetrack. Both cars wound up down there. There you can see Wally is climbing out of his number 15 car, and that's his final race in that machine. He's limping as he gets away from the uh, crash, and he goes to the side of Loy Allen's car to see if Loy might be injured. Here's a replay of what happened from Allen's perspective. the gas and all of a sudden he's up in the wall now wasn't somebody in the rear there I don't know what and he hit hard both on the outside and the inside meanwhile pit stops are occurring once again Jerry Jeff Gordon getting right side tires pitting at the far end of the right behind him you see the Ernie Irvin car just to the right of your screen they will get a half around the bike now left side tires getting ready to go on to the DuPont Chevrolet as Ward Burton is down Bobby Lamont is down in the way the six car the two car must be low. and now Gordon is down being followed out by Ernie Irvin after four tire changes. and Rick Mast and Sterling Marlin out of the pits. Look at the impact. Uh, outside impact has already been made, and now there is Wally Dahlenbrack back T-boning him, and then also contact with the inside wall. And right in the driver's door, the worst possible spot a car can be hit is in the driver's door. So we have a great amount of concern now for Loy Allen. Looks like they've got the Jaws of Life right there. You saw Buster with the Jaws of Life ready to cut the roof off the car, roll bars, whatever they need to do. And, of course, he was uh, out. Yeah, right now they're doing it. Buster's taking the Jaws of Life. They will be cutting the roof off this car to get Loy Allen out. He just missed several races early this year, Ned, because of an injury. Yes, he did. That was at Rockingham, North Carolina. So the rescue crew is there and extracting uh, Loy Allen from his battered race car. Back in a moment. The Napa 500, 198 laps completed here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and our caution flag is waving once again because of an accident. This one involving Wally Dahlenbach, who is okay. He got out of the car. Loy Allen is being helped from the car. They're using the jaws of life. Here it is again. I don't know what happened to his car that he just all of a sudden let off on the gas and then he was into the wall on the outside and then as he slid down across the racetrack Wally Dahlenbach comes along and hits him right in the driver's door. There it is, you see. Yeah. So, I just wondered maybe the left front tire didn't touch the apron down to just exactly like we saw Mickey Hudspeth yesterday in the Arca race. Let's see. He's going in the corner. Uh, if we can see the white line, there it is on the left-hand side. That is the divide of the racetrack and the apron. And right there, he drives. Yes. seems like he drives across the apron just a little bit. And he loses some of his bank, and sometimes that'll cause the back of the car to jerk around. And then he loses control and goes way below the line before sliding up and making contact. John Kernan is with Wally Dahlenbach. Well, Bob, I saw it happen right in front of me, and I saw Wally come in. He went low trying to miss it, but Wally, it just, you just couldn't miss it, could you? No. Every time I started to go, I tried to avoid him. You know, the car was going left to right, and then when it came that final time, I mean, the last thing you want to do is hit somebody in the door. And uh, I tried getting it slowed down as much as I could. I tried to avoid him, but... It, it happened so fast, I just hope he's okay. And we saw you get out of the car and limp a little bit. Are you all right? Yeah, he's, he's conscious, and, uh, you know, that's all I can tell. But, uh, you know, pretty concerned about him, but I think he's going to be all right. I hope he will be. Uh, of course, the concern uh, with the fellow driver, but how about you? You were limping. Uh, it stopped me pretty fast, uh, but I'm sure he took a lot worse hit than I, I did. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll just hang tight, and uh, hopefully he'll be okay. All right, thank you, Wally. Bob? We've seen some very, very bad crashes here this weekend, and uh, in yesterday's marker race, we had seen one after another. Let's hope that Loy Allen is going to be okay in, uh, in this crash. It has brought out the caution flag for the sixth time this afternoon. 200 laps are completed. We'll be right back. The 
set to go back to racing again. The report on Loy Allen, conscious, neck collar, left arm splinted. We'll have a more thorough comport report when it's available. Right now, we are going to go back to racing as the crowd is on its feet. 212 laps completed as the green comes out on lap 213. Bobby Labonte is at the front of the field again, and Ward Burton is right behind him. Ward Burton have been running up there in the top uh, 12 or so cars. And and there he goes. There he goes to the lead. Ward Burton goes by Bobby Labonte, or tries to go by Labonte, and there's Mark Martin. Labonte does not want to give up the lead. Comes back on the outside. Ward has not led a lap today. His brother Jeff has. He's led one lap. Let's see if he's going to hold it to the line. Yes, he will. Ward Burke becomes our 11th leader of this race. And now the battle for second as Mark Martin tries to take the spot from Bobby. I would suspect it was a two-tire change. Yeah, he came in 12th and came out, went in the pits 12th and came out 4th. There are the drivers that have won in 95 that have not won yet in 1996. And boy, they're up there battling for that win, aren't they? Kyle, of course, Kyle Petty is also on that list. However, his chances were eliminated of getting into victory circle in 96 when he failed to make today's show. But he's got a new sponsor and his own team for next year, Hot Wheels, the Mattel Toy Company, the sponsorship next year for Kyle Penny. There is Jeff Gordon taking the fifth position away from Hutt Strickland. And back to the lead, here comes Mark Martin, the battle lead forward, trying to get by that Pontiac, the MBNA Pontiac. And ooh, will he do it? Yes, he will. But Ward's going to come back on the inside, or try to. A nice save by Mark Martin, and he leads the lap. Wow. Must have been slight contact between him and Ward Burton. Man, oh, man. Ward's going to go down and try it again. Meanwhile, look at Jeff Gordon there in the back of this line. He has four fresh tires. All of those in front of him only took on two tires. Bill has more on Mark Martin as he continues to battle with Ward. Mark Martin is driving car JR62. He has run well with that car at Charlotte and at Rockingham. It's the second car that Roush Racing has built from the ground up, and they're really looking for big things from this car. Why? Because they have three more copies of this car sitting up at their shop. Now, earlier in this decade, Mark Martin has had dismal seasons. He had one year where he didn't win. He came to Atlanta, came to this race, and won. Another year, he only won at Watkins Place. Came to this race and won. His crew is very confident that he can pull off a win today. I talked to Steve Neal. He says we're having the same situation we've had in the last 14 races. Great runs. We just can't win it. Maybe he can today, though, as Jeff Gordon takes fourth position from Bobby Labonte. Ward Burton's best finish uh, here was this race last year. He was fifth. And his best finish of 1996 was at Charlotte. He was seventh. You see Ernie Irvin going by Hutt Strickland, taking that spot away. That's six spot. There's Jerry Labonte. There's Dale Jarrett. So our top point contenders are in the top 11 spots. Jeff Gordon is fourth, Terry Labonte eighth, and Jared is 11th. This is a great battle for the lead here between Martin and Burton. Martin's got it back. Rusty Wallace hanging right in there with them, holding on Jeff Gordon. So Wallace, maybe his car works best on two tires. Two fresh tires, I should say. He's got four tires on the car, of course. <laughs> 
get back on Jeff Gordon. He goes to the inside and passes Rusty Wallace with ease. Bobby Labonte also does, and now here comes Ernie Irvin to try to do so. And as I pointed out a little bit earlier, Bob, in another situation where somebody just took on two tires, and Gordon now tries to take over second place. Those new tires on the right side will hold you for about six or eight laps, and then when they get heated up, then it begins to tail on. Exactly what we're seeing. The sword appears to be going backwards instead of forward. Well, I don't know. I think that he just he moved over not to impede the progress of Jeff Ford. He does not certainly want to be uh, someone that cost a championship with Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Just go pulls up on the inside of Mark Martin, and here comes Ward Burton right with him. Yep. But Jeff Gordon is back in the lead. Now the battle for third between Bobby Labonte and Mark Martin. Well, there's still over 100 laps to go, so Jeff Gordon could still lead the most laps. He's going to have to lead most of the laps that are left, but he's, he could lead the most laps in this race. He's only led 11 as he comes down now and completes that lap. It will move that total up to 11. And Jeff Gordon is starting to stretch out on the competition. And look at the points battle. <laughs> the interval is down to 14. And remember, if he leads the most laps here today, he can knock five off of that. But still, it would be Terry Labonte winning the championship. Look at here. Yep. Mark Martin right now is ahead of Dale Earnhardt in the point. But that's right now. Earnhardt, remember, made a late pit stop there to take on fuel to assure himself of being able to go with one more pit stop. And Ernie Irvin is only one point, point behind Rusty Wallace for seventh position. They're together on the racetrack. So lots to be settled here yet this afternoon in this 104 laps that are remaining. Levante just passed Rusty the last time around. Moved him into sixth place, moved Rusty back to seventh. Terry seems to be running a little bit higher line than a lot of them. That keeps his car freed up. Doesn't put as much strain and pressure on the tires. Doesn't heat him up quite as much. Next time around, we will have exactly one remaining. Hutt Strickland has had an outstanding performance here today. He's had a strong late season, as a matter of fact. Running up in eighth spot right now. Richard Broom will go over there as the team manager for that team next year. They're going to get their own engine back in-house. They built the engines many times at Stavola Brothers. Now they're going to bring it back in-house. Boy, you're going to thank the car doing a lot of this. <laughs> Ricky Rudd, Michael Walton, Sterling Mullen in that group, Jimmy Spencer. 17th on back. And the one car is 18th. Go Ford that we're riding with, driven by Michael Walter from White of Ford, the USS Enterprise, as part of a special promotion surrounding the movie First Contact, which is another in the latest of uh, Star Trek films. So the Sitco Ford is carrying the colors of the USS Enterprise here today, the uh, silver and white. Michael trying to hold on to 14th position. Meanwhile, Dale Jarrett is on the move, passing Rusty Wallace for seven. Doing it up on the outside. And look at Jarrett's lap speed, 176.9, almost 
close matching the speed of the leader. And here is Bobby Labonte and Ward Burton side by side for second position. There's that glare that we've been mentioning, and as the race goes along, the glare will get worse. lap the fastest was Jeff Gordon at 177.0 in fact he was quite a bit faster than everybody else so he fell away as a result of yeah. uh, second quick was Neil Jarrett Bernie Irvin moving around Ward Burton there's Sterling Marlin going by Michael Waldrop well oh, they're just passing going on everywhere and look at the glare there that we're talking about man and the sad part is it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yep. Now with less than 100 laps to go in the Napa 500, it's Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Mark Martin, Ernie Irvin, and Ward Burton. You're riding with the leader of the race but the driver who is still second in the championship points battle, Jeff Gordon, because Terry Labonte, the points leader, is fifth. Dale Jarrett is running sixth in this race, and he, of course, is still in third position in the point standing. There we see the second-place car, Bobby Labonte, and Mark Martin is the third-place car. The question is, can these cars make it on one more stop? They said Bobby Labonte could make it. Dale Earnhardt stopped on the last lap of the last caution flag, so obviously he's going to try to make it on one more stop. There you have Labonte, Jarrett, and Burton. Jeff Burton, that is, who's had a great run today, running in seventh at the moment. Yeah, these cars uh, passed Ward Burton not too long ago. Ward, uh, his car is slipping back now with those older tires on that Rusty Wallace and Jeff Burton of those guys. Jeff Burton's crew chief, Buddy Parrott, leads in the RCA Pit Strategy Award for $50,000 over Gary Dehart and Richard Broom. That is the award for the team that displays the best pit strategy. So that's another award that will be handed out in New York City. Watch as he go in turn three. Let's see how bad the glare is. Drives into the sun. Ah, still can see the racetrack, so it's not too bad. Now remember, that's the roof cam, so that's positioned much higher than the driver's eyes. Okay. This will be a little better indication. All right, and also we got a dirty windshield. Comes off the corner. Looks like he's a little bit faster than Dale Jarrett right now. Getting off of that corner, Jeff Burton is really coming off of that turn. He's Let's losing a little bit some other places. Now then, oh, where'd the racetrack go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, we can see that the glare is getting severe down in three. And folks, what you saw there is basically what it looks like to the drivers when they go in the corner. They just kind of, there's a spot that you drive in the middle of the racetrack, and when you get through that spot, you find it where you are on the racetrack. a run on Dale. Well, he, he really makes a run on him off of that corner every time. Jarrett seems to be getting through three and four, maybe just a little bit better. Than the turn, but coming off the two is where he really get him. And Mark Martin now working on the bottom of the line. Yeah, this is for second. Are you there in the picture? He's running forward. And Dale Earnhardt and the 21 of uh, Michael Walker are running together on the racetrack. That's, that's a 43 of Bobby. Yep. Hamilton, both silver this race. That's most nice spot. Looks like Earnhardt just took that spot away from Hamilton. And Hus Strickland is back in the 11th spot now. What if Gary Dehart, Terry Labonte, and those guys are starting counting down the laps? <laughs> 85. With 85 more laps, that's all we've got to last. Yep. And they'll have themselves a championship.
Burton just stopped by Dale Jarrett. He got one of those runs off turn two. He got his fender alongside, so Jarrett just backed off and let him go. There they are. Six and seven. Six and seven. There's a fifth place car, and there's a second place car. And it, right now, that's Mark Martin. It was the 18 of Bobby Labonte. And here comes Ernie Irvin up to join that fight for third spot now. Second, third, and fourth right together. There's the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Fifth, sixth, and seventh place car, I should say. See Jerry Labonte, you know, he's got to figure that Jeff Gordon's going to win the race. I mean, if, if I was that crew, I'd be figuring that Jeff Gordon's going to win the race. He's going to lead the most laps. There's a battle for third spot. So, man, I got to hang in the top six or seven. So Bobby Labonte has lost two positions here in the last couple of laps, and side by side are Terry Labonte and Jeff Burton. Jerry, with an update on Terry Labonte's hand. How's he doing, Doc? Well, Bob, you got to give Terry Labonte a call. The crew said, if you have a problem, let us know immediately. And I guess it's the old no news is good news situation. Yesterday in the final practice, after about 25 minutes, Terry was very, very stoic when he climbed out of the car, obviously uncomfortable. He has now been gripping that steering wheel with a three-finger grip on that injured left hand for almost three hours and has not said a single word. Let's go to John Curtis. Well, guys, uh, the helicopter is here. It looks like they're getting ready to uh, take Boy out. And Emmett Bird from the Speedway has just walked up in. And Emmett, uh, can you give us an update on Lloyd? Yeah, uh, Lloyd is alert. He's conscious. He's talking. The doctors are taking a look at a contusion on the driver's side on his arm. But he's stable. He's fine. He, he doesn't remember the wreck, but that's normal. At this point, they, all they want to do is evaluate him. So they're going to take him to the Georgia Baptist Hospital, probably by life flight helicopter. But, but the good news is, Lloyd's talking to us. He seems to be fine in all those effects. They just want to take a good look at him. Now, we also saw one of the emergency crew workers was brought in. Uh, what happened to him? Evidently, a light bar came off one of the trucks uh, when they took off suddenly for that. He's fine. He's talking. He's got a little knot on the head, so he's okay, too. But the good news is about Lloyd, because that was a pretty tough lick. And, uh, you know, they're going to take him just for precautionary measures to make sure he's okay. Check him out there. But he's totally stable, and everything seems to be fine there. The doctor is very encouraged. Okay, well, they are bringing uh, Loy out on a stretcher now and uh, getting ready to put him on the helicopter. But uh, the report from down here, guys, is good news. Yeah, that's very positive information. And uh, we hope they find everything okay when he is taken to the hospital. Well, look at Jeff Burton. He's on the move. He has moved up now on Bobby Labonte. He's running fifth. Bobby Labonte running in fourth place. And Jeff Burton about to take that away from him. Seems like the longer Burton's car run, the better and faster it goes. In, in relation, at least, to others. Now, uh, Labonte <laughs> fighting back, though, Benny. Yeah, he drove up behind the 99. He got that car loose up in the middle of the corner and uh, decided he would try to do the same thing as Jeff Burton, but this time... Burton goes to the corner on the outside, so Labonte chooses to let him go ahead. Great year they've had that 99 car. Jeff Burton, Buddy Parrott. And there is Jeff Gordon, whose 10 victories that he has already recorded this year are the most in the modern era, which began in 1972. They're the top 10 back in a moment. 254 laps have been completed. Now, if Jeff Gordon can lead the rest of the way, he will clinch the most laps led award with three laps to go. So, therefore, he will pick up five bonus points. Now, I aired a few minutes ago in saying his 10 victories were the most in the modern era. Richard Petty won 13 and 75. David Pearson won 11 and 73. Daryl Walter 12 and 81 and 82. Elliott 11 and 85. And Earnhardt 11 in 1987. Thank you, Ron. I read the information. I just want to let these people know. Yep. Don't like to make mistakes, especially when you're around. <laughs> I know all your friends. I thought while all that was going on, Ernie Irvin made a pit stop. Yeah, he did. Uh, a little bit earlier than we thought that he would come in, changed all four tires. And he can't make it the rest of the way. He's no. got to stop again. Yeah, yeah, he, he can't make it the rest of the way. Let everybody drive.
drive through here, see where your favorite driver is running on the racetrack. Jeff has quite a lead, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He haven't had the clock on him lately, but it's, uh, it's pretty good on this pit right here right now. Just see where he is in relation to Mark Martin. It's about 3.7 seconds. Pits now. Yep. 43 and 28 71 from here on. It's, uh, that's kind of cut it close for a while. Really people. cut it close, yes. Well, the leaders have not gotten the caution yet, but they are uh, slowing down and some are getting uh, a lap back. Here comes Jeff off the fourth corner and taking the caution flag. Joe Nemechek, yes, I believe he will. Let's see, Nemechek is uh, 45 laps down. Yes, okay, Here's Jerry. Ernie pitted just a moment ago. They really weren't sure what had happened. Ernie said, I got a right front tire going down. They came in and suddenly looked at the right front tire, and this is what was left of the right front tire. But they took it off and checked the air pressure, and the air pressure was okay in the outside and in the inner liner. They're not really sure what happened, but it looked like the tire had been cut or shredded. So Larry McReynolds was just going back over the wall to tell Ernie, be careful. Maybe something is rubbing, and suddenly it was too late. Yeah, he got to him just a little bit late because Ernie impacted the wall up in turn two and then slid to the bottom of the racetrack. Here's the replay. He's already up against the wall here. Rubbing the left side. And we're going to see Robert Presley go by. I think it's Robert Presley, wasn't yeah, it? I think so. Yeah, up on the outside there. He was up in the marbles and holding on, but he kept control. So this is our seventh caution of the afternoon, and you can see the stiff breeze that continues to blow. It has been blowing all afternoon down the front straightaway and up the back stretch. Now, here we go with more pit stops. Yeah, they were not far from green flag pit stops, so they got to come in here now. John Kernan in Jeff Burton's pit. It'll be a four-tire change for Jeff Burton as the crew goes to work on the right side, not anticipating any chassis adjustments or any pressure adjustments. The car seems to run really well on long runs. Buddy Carrot trying to pump his guys in. Come on, get that car up off the ground. But it could be very close on fuel. Let's go down to Jerry Park. Triple pitcher watching Jeff Gordon top. Five and 88 on the bottom. Right side tires are Kevin got on Terry Labonte's car. Likewise, now left side tires going on the car number 24. This could be the final pit stop of the 1996 season. Dale Jarrett is down and away. Here is Gordon. It'll be Gordon on pit road in the 99, the 18, and the rest is a scramble. Boy, it was about to be a scramble. Jeff Burton coming down pit road at a pretty good clip. He pitted way up there in turn four. Mark Martin was pulling out, and they and Earnhardt pulling out. They almost wrecked. Well, Joe Nemechek is being held here on the front straightaway, so apparently he uh, did not get his lap back, and they're going to hold him there. Let's take a break at Atlanta Motor Speedway. 259 laps are completed. Good as they are. If you All right, Linda, thank you very much. We are back at Atlanta Motor Speedway under caution because of an incident up in number two involving Ernie Irvin. Let's look at a pit stop summary here as Jeff Gordon came into the pits in first position and exits there. Mark Martin lost three positions. Terry Labonte lost one. Dale Jarrett lost one. And Earnhardt picked up three positions. Came in in seventh and went out in fourth. The 99 car is a fellow that picked up all the spots. I don't know where he went in the race, but he did come out in second spot. Also Bobby Labonte. Pace car still out there with the field in tow. Went in third and came out in second spot. Well, they have completed 261 laps, gentlemen. And that means we've got about 467 to go. Is that a, an adequate amount on the fuel they've got? It's going to be awful close for some cars, I would think. Yeah, I would think so, but I'll bet that there are a few out there that can go that far. And I would say that Bobby Labonte is probably one of those that... What did Jerry say to run 65 laps or something a moment ago? And with 
all those caution flags? First, the more they run under caution here, the better off they will be. Exactly. So they're still uh, getting Ernie Irvin's car off the racetrack, and so that's continuing to uh, be the reason why we are displaying the yellow. We're going to show you a field summary when we come back from this break. There's a look at Ray Evernham, who's watching his driver, Jeff Gordon, leading the race at the moment, but still second in the championship points. Okay, the situation is that Jeff Gordon is in the lead. We go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, they had initially calculated if they could go 65 laps, they have to go about 68 or 69 laps. And boy, they've been going over and over. Mike Landis, that's the man who calculates the fuel, standing up on top of the wall alongside Ray Abraham. And they have gone over the numbers twice. Jeff Gordon is ready and said, what should I do, Ray? Should I stand back and save fuel, or can I go get him? And Ray said, go after him, champ. To Bill Weber. I walked over to ask Steve Meal, the crew chief on Mark Martin's car, if they were going to be able to make it on fuel. I didn't even have to, have to ask the question. He said, no way. I walked over and asked Steve Allen, the gas man on the 88 car. He said, no way. John Kernan. Well, up here in Jeff Burton's pit talk to the crew chief, uh, Buddy Parrott, and Buddy says, no, we can't make it, although it looks like they might be setting up for a splash and go. They told me about 65 laps, 64, 65 laps is all they could get out of the tank. Back to Jerry Punch. Back into Jeff Gordon pits. Lonnie, Lonnie Higgins, the guy I caught up with. Hey, Lonnie, we've been listening to your music all year long. You own racetracks, and we really appreciate the expert, but uh, the monies from the sales of your racetracks really go to help a lot of people in Winston Cup racing. Yes, uh, a portion of the proceeds goes to the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary, Racing Wives Helping Lives. And uh, we're in the process of recording a new album now, and we've got some surprises. Some drivers are going to be singing on this next album. Well, we look forward to the music. I'm not so sure about the drivers singing, but Lonnie, <laughs> thanks for all your talent, and we enjoy having it on ESPN, and thanks for coming today. I want to say hi to my mom and also to Cheryl and Liz. Lonnie Hillard. Uh, trying to help the Winston Cup driving Wise Auxiliary. Bob? Boy, pit road is pretty busy, Doc. Uh, there are several cars coming in uh, for some last-minute splashes and goes here. Some of those that were on the back end of the lead lap, uh, Michael Walter was back there behind where well, he was running ninth before he came in. He came in and topped off. So did Ricky Rudd, several others. Some of those cars that were one or more laps down had nothing to lose. They came in and topped off. But those that are running up front, they didn't. I remember a record album that was recorded several years ago with some uh, NASCAR Winston Cup drivers uh, singing or trying to sing. Uh, were you in that? There we see the 25 car. He and Dave Marcus collided on pit road. We see them working on the right front of Kenny Schrader's car. Schrader is not having a very good day. He's back in 22nd position, just one lap down, and this is going to put him two laps down it would appear as the field is about to come off lap four uh, off a uh, turn number four were you on that album that the drivers sang yeah never mind. Let's, <laughs> let's see what happened here here we see kenny schrader coming in the pits from his onboard camera going down pit road no problem there everything's okay there must have been when he came out maybe just a splash of gas is all he's going to get he starts yeah. out of the pits and Ooh. there marcus is yep. All right, green flag is back out here in Atlanta, and the race resumes as Jeff Gordon leads the procession down the back stretch, being pursued by Jeff Burton and Bobby Labonte. Of course, they all have four fresh tires now. The 99 car got in the corner. It looked like he got extremely loose or something happened up the hill. And Earnhardt had gotten by Bobby Labonte. He's now in second spot. Yeah, I think Burton just got his right wheel. He went in there and got off the high, got those right wheels all the way up a little too high and just simply had to back off the gas to keep him hitting the wall. Boy, it cost him, uh, what? He fell from second back to sixth position. This is a replay of what happened up there in turn one a lap ago to Jeff Burton. He goes in the corner of the 18 car. He, he, he thinks he's under him. He goes in the corner. Ned, you're right, got too high. See, he just keeps getting high there. And Earnhardt gets under him. That pushes him up a little bit higher. The air does, I should say. Wow. And he got those right wheels up there in the loose stuff, as they call it. And uh, no traction. All 
right. Here comes Dale Earnhardt now catching up to the leader of the race, Jeff Gordon. I'm sure they've been adjusting on that Goodwin Chevrolet all afternoon. And we've pointed out several times that he's been very fast on the new tires. But after the run a while, the car is, has gotten loose on him now. Whether that has changed, I'm sure they may be just on it, but not have that fixed. And Earnhardt has not led a lap so far. So if he does lead a lap, he'll become our 12th different leader of the afternoon. He's coming up on Jeff Gordon off the fourth corner, but Jeff will lead this lap. Looks to me like he's going to lead a lap. There are 59 to go. Cars staying right on the bottom of the racetrack like these other cars, and right now Jeff Gordon's car moving up the racetrack a little bit. And of course, if anyone but Gordon leads from this point out, it's going to hurt uh, Jeff's chances of leading the most laps here this afternoon. Well, look at Earnhardt drive that baby in the corner, trying to get on the outside of Gordon. Can he do it? Not yet. Bill Weber has a report from Earnhardt's pit. Well, it's hard to say that when you're fourth in points, you really want to win to save the tail end of your season. That's the story for Dale Earnhardt closing in and looking inside of Jeff Gordon. But the story on Earnhardt's car is he shoots into the lead side by side with Gordon and trying to pass it as they head into three. They've got the handle down and not into that car. And we got a car up the wall. Up. It's Ken Schrader up in the wall. Obviously, the right front has blown on the tie on the car. And they're hoping to get off the racetrack, but no caution yet, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Still no caution as the car remains at the top of the racetrack. And he heads for pit road and gets off the racetrack, and so there will be no caution. Unless Look at the damage of that. Look at the damage of that right front as he goes right behind the wall. ride to be in that Budweiser Chevrolet it was Richard Grayson will take over that ride in 1997. Dale Earnhardt is in the lead and here's a battle for the sixth position between Jeff Burton and Dale Jarrett. You wonder if that contact that he had with Dave Marcus in the pit area, that right front might have been rubbing that tire and caused it to go flat. Caution is coming out, apparently some debris on the racetrack. This will give everybody a chance to go in and get pop off that field. We don't have to worry about it no more. Earnhardt led that lap, but uh, Jeff was trying to get back in the lead position. This is the eighth caution of the day, and we'll show you from the onboard camera why we're in our eighth caution of the day with Ken Schrader. He was right in front of the leaders, and going down the back stretch. Heading into turn three, he got right up next to the wall. You can see apparently the tire or something let go. Fortunately, he was close to the wall before he started happening. And you see the leaders go by down on the inside. So he just stays up there on the outside. You know what? He never hit anything. I mean, he never hit the wall. The tire just... Now, watch this contact we're talking about. Right there between Marcus and Shredder. We see he bent that fender in, and when he worked on the fender, and, and those guys tried to get the fender beat back out, but I'm sure that that fender cut the tire down as he was going down the back stretch. Yep, I would think that would be correct. Schrader behind the wall. We are seeing pit stops being made now as Dale Earnhardt leads everybody down. And now we know they will have enough after getting filled up this time to go the distance. Here's John Kernan. Jeff Burton is in. It's just going to be gasoline only as they top it off. They get the nod. Yes, okay, it's full. Go, go, go. Let's go down to Bill Weber and Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt would not have been able to reach the finish on fuel, so this stop will save him. Now, Jeff. Jeff, the Jeff Gordon's pit. And they will top off Jeff Gordon. No tires. It's fuel only. He is down and away, so it'll be Gordon and then Bobby Levani, Dale Jarrett, as they head back to turn one. Jeff Gordon. Burton is going to fall in next. Terry Labonte loses some track position there on that pit stop. There is Gordon as he catches up to the rest of the field. 274 out of 328 laps completed at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Back after these guys. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch bringing you all the excitement of the final 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup race here at Atlanta. The championship decider. And right now, Jeff Gordon, who we ride with, is the leader of the race, but 
is still second in points because Terry Labonte is in ninth spot. Well, let's show you now an AutoZone off-track interval comparing Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt. Well, Dale Earnhardt changed right side tires. That's exactly why his time was slower than Jeff Gordon's. But Jeff Gordon's not leading the race right now. No, that's right. Uh, Bobby Hamilton is leading the race because he was one of those who uh, came in for a top-off just before we went green uh, last time. And so he and Ricky Rudd and several others, as a matter of fact, uh, stayed out there. Michael Walter. So that's the first three cars right now. Hamilton, Rudd, and Michael Walter. Jeff Gordon, as we see right along with, is in fourth spot. Bobby Labonte is in fifth. And the lights are out atop the pace car, so we'll go back to racing next time around. And Terry Labonte right now, our points leader, is in 12th spot. Yep. That's still okay as far as yes. him winning the championship. It, yeah, you know, that's what I just looked up. It would be, a, there's right now a 14-point difference uh, according to how they're running on the racetrack. After the uh, conclusion of this race, we're going to bring you Shop Talk, and that will be your first opportunity to buy championship merchandise. And then right after Shop Talk, we've got golf coming up for you here on ESPN, the Energizer Senior Tour Championship from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That's 5 o'clock this afternoon. Ernie Irvin has been released from the Infield Care Center. That is good news after his crash over in turn number two. Loy Allen, of course, is being taken into a uh, hospital in Atlanta for further evaluation, but apparently is not uh, suffering any serious injuries. Two by two lineup as we get set to resume racing at the completion of lap 277. Now remember, way back in the race that Bobby Hamilton was charging up towards the front, then he had to come back in the pits and uh, had to go to the rear of the line. He's fought his way back up there. He fought his way back up into the top 10. Don't know how fast that Pontiac is, but we'll certainly find out right now. And Michael Walker for really holding up uh, Jeff Gordon there on that restart. Sure is. Jeff finally gets down to the bottom side of him, but uh, he lost some track position there. Michael, I don't know if his Ford just wouldn't take off from what happened, but the Bobby Hamilton and Ricky Rudd just drove away from him. right now Jeff Gordon trailing by 14 Dale Jarrett is 67 points behind Jeff Gordon Dale Earnhardt holding on to fourth Mark Martin in fifth position the point standing just 43 behind Earnhardt there you see Earnhardt on the high side of the racetrack about to catch up to Dale Jarrett he's got those two new fresh tires on that outside and we've said that his car has been awfully strong with new tires but he was strong anyway right before this caution came out he was just past Jeff Gordon and had taken the lead so he is still strong and Jeff Gordon trying to get by he was able to get by Bill Elliott now he's working on Chad Little not too long ago, Ward Burton was in the lead lap and right up there amongst them. However, Burton is now a lap down. Look at Earnhardt go on the outside. Boy, he's got himself up. And Bobby Labonte is trying to get by Jeff Gordon down in turn one, and he's going to do it. Yes, Three he wide. is. Oh. Stepped it right in there. So Bobby Labonte now is in third position, and Jeff Gordon is fourth. Up front, it is Bobby Hamilton and Ricky Rudd, first and second. We're probably to the point now that, it's, uh, that Jeff Gordon cannot lead the most laps. Is that fair to say? Well, let me check the computer here. Let's see if I can determine that. Because a while ago, it said it had to lead till, till three laps to go, I and mean, it's already been more yep. than three laps. So I, think that... I believe Bobby Labonte is going to get the uh, five bonus points for leading the most laps. And watch, left. watch him as he go in turn three. And watch this sun as it gets in these windshields. Right now, they really need a cloud cover. That's from the roof cam inside the race car. It's even worse than that. Terry Labonte down on the bottom side of Bill Elliott. Labonte's back in 11. Phil 
still a lot of scrambling going on back there for positions. Those that lost a lot of track position on that pit stop here for line drives on the outside of Rusty Wallace. And we'll do it. That moves him in the 10th spot. And Bobby Labonte has just wrapped up the five bonus points from leading the most laps. Even though he's not even the lead. That's there is right. the leader of the race, Bobby Hamilton. Yep. Mickey Rudd is in second spot. Third and fourth, Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon. Oh, here's a three-car battle. Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, and Mark Martin. Well, Jeff Burton was trying to go on the inside of Michael Waltrip, and his car slipped up, so he had to... But Jarrett tried to get on the outside then of Burton when his car slipped up for one room. Here's Jimmy Spencer and Sterling Marlin involved in a battle for 15th spot. Take your pick, do have it. Looks like Sterling Marlin has it. Spencer wants it. Good though, nine. Still 17 cars on the lead lap. And one of those is Ward Burton. He's back in 13th position. Seven. He stayed up there in the lead lap all day. He's done a great job. Ted Musgrave is at the uh, rear of that line, is uh, not on the lead lap. He's eight laps down in 31st. Now Jeff Gordon up to Ricky Rudd, trying to take over second. Or make that third place. Bobby Labonte has gone to second. And Earnhardt now comes up on Ricky Rudd. Bobby Labonte has caught the leader. The SPP Pontiac, Bobby Hamilton leads the race, and on the outside, Bobby Labonte is going by. And Earnhardt went on the inside of Rudd while all that was going on, took over the fourth position. There they are, the top five. Yep, right there in a the line. And Jeff Gordon now to the inside of Bobby Hamilton, taking over second. Let's see if Dale Earnhardt will not at the moment. Going high. If you watch this battle back there for us. Jared Seventh, eight, nine. Jared and Labonte. There's Earnhardt. Made the pass on the outside of Bobby Hamilton. Here we call last year Dale Earnhardt won the race, did what he had to do, but came up short in the championship. Ricky Rudd to the inside of Bobby Hamilton for fourth. Gary Labonte is back in eight spots. See the pile on there? If he can stay right there, no matter what Jeff Gordon does, he will be the 1996 Winston Cup champion. There he is running alongside Michael Walter. and trying to take over the seventh spot. A little insurance. No, he's got a good race car. He has a great race car. He's, he's going to he's gonna drive it hard and careful, but... Losing more spots and they sit go forward. Just about to lose ninth for Jeff Burton. Well, Ernie Urban, see your comment points as of now. Did Ernie Urban drop out of the top 10? Well, well he's in 10th position, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Well, there he's in the 24th spot. Dolan back still hanging on to that 25th spot. Terry can finish as low as 11th in this race if Gordon wins, and still Terry would win the title. Position swap once again as Bobby Hamilton passes Ricky Rudd. There's how far they are behind the three leaders. The three Chevrolets out front. And you got Pontiac in the forward. 
Dale Jarrett about to reel in Ricky Rudd and Bobby Hamilton. Ford has 24 wins here at this racetrack, Chevy 22. Three Chevys, as Ned said, in the top three positions. By the way, Chevrolet did wrap up the manufacturer's trophy in Phoenix last week with Terry Labonte's uh, third place finish. Yep. Rusty Wallace, Michael Walter running together. Rick Sachs, he's a lap down in the 40 car in 18th position. This guy's race four position. Wow, this crash over or about to be a was crash. Almost a crash. <laughs> it just didn't didn't totally materialize, did it? <laughs> Who was it? Hutt Strickland was the car that I saw that was going the slowest when I looked up, so I'm assuming that he got sideways. And I looked up and there were cars sideways and coming off a of turn two over there. So that's gotta be a crash. <laughs> I just gonna call it early, you know. So Dale Jarrett's got around Ricky Rudd while that's going on, taking over the fifth position. And Terry Labonte has caught Ricky Rudd as we see the car number four of Sterling Marlin still on the move. He's in the 16th position. And here's what you guys were talking about. You scared me to death. Whoa! I see why you got all excited. Well, watch this. He's still out of control, isn't he? <laughs> he finally saved it. That, was that car sideways or what? Well, it was. Oh, I don't know how he saved it. They say when you, these radial tires, when it gets sideways with you, forget it. But he did a great job. Well, Terry just picked up another position going to sixth. More insurance there for him. Yep. Now, if Jeff finishes where he is running at the moment in second position, Labonte wins the title if he is 13th or better. This thing is not going to be decided nope. until the last lap. Right now, there's 17 cars on the That's lead right. lap. Yep. To that point that you made at the top of the show, there's going to be a lot of cars in the lead lap. And uh, so, you know, the last two laps could make a, a difference. I mean, there'll, there'll be a factor. Heinz 57 field summary. There are 17 cars currently on the lead lap. There they are, Bobby Hill in the last car on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett, Dale Jarrett moves into the fourth spot, getting by Bobby Hamilton. The fourth, fifth, and sixth. Terry Labonte is in sixth. And the sixth place car. You see Ricky Rudd's tied ride coming in. That's the seventh place car. And Mark Martin on the bottom of the racetrack. That's eighth place. Rudd continued that streak that uh, he was after, winning a race every year since 1983 when he took the checkered flag in Rockingham not too long ago. Bobby Labonte beginning to pull away from Jeff Gordon now. 30 laps to go. There is the leader of the race, Bobby Labonte. He was the pole sitter this race. will walk away with $136,800 in Unical bonus money if he wins the event. There's no track in the world that's tougher on brakes than the one in Martinsville, Virginia. And when drivers take the green flag here, they... So Kyle joins Ricky Craven, Dale Jarrett, and Jeff Gordon as the finalists in the True Value NASCAR Man of the Year Award. Well, Kyle did not make this race. There is his dad, King Richard's car, driven by Bobby Hamilton. Kyle, of course, will be back in 1997 with a new sponsor and with a team that uh, they call the RP2 team. But it won't be run out of the pit Enterprises, not in their physical location. As a matter of fact, he has rented Bobby Rahilly's shop. Uh, the old Ray Hart. Terry Labonte has just gone into fifth position, passing Bobby Hamilton, so Labonte still remains on championship pace. Jerry has more on Terry Labonte. Well, the Kellogg crew standing on the wall, guys. You know, if Terry Labonte holds on, it'll be a popular win among the drivers, but it'll also be a popular win among crew members. And for one reason, there's a guy on this crew that's been around for four decades. 60-year-old Dan Ford has been building gears and transmissions for four decades and has never won a title. He is loved by everyone, and this morning he sat in the lounge with a tear in his eye and said, Doc, maybe today is our day. And oh, by the way, a 
deal this morning between Bobby and Terry Labonte. Terry said, if I win the championship and you win the race, let's take a victory lap together as brothers. And that is the way it's set up right now. Bobby is leading and Terry is the champion at the moment. The 88 car is on the move. Neil Jarrett running in fourth place. been uh, picking up he's picked up about a second on Bobby Labonte in the last six or seven laps and he's really getting close on Earnhardt right now for the third position let's check the last speeds of uh, those running in the top ten wow yeah we see that Dale Jerry right now the fastest car on the racetrack when he got out of all that traffic, he was in 11th place. No, I'm sorry, he was in 7th place there. And then uh, got out of the traffic and was just uh, lowered him down. Almost three miles an hour faster than Dale Earnhardt. And once again, Dale Earnhardt, same situation. He's really good for about 10 or 15 laps. And then it just goes away. Jarrett with a run coming off the fourth quarter. And Dale Jarrett is going to pick up another position. When you, have to, when you have to race these other cars, see the speed that you lose? Yep. Lost about three miles per hour. Yep. There's Jeff Gordon's crew and the hopes that remain there for his championship, although they are slipping away as each lap goes by. Now Jared had cut Bobby Labonte's lead down to about 2.6 seconds, and now it's over three seconds, just that one lap and making that pass. There are 20 laps to go in the final race of the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season. The Labonte brothers are the stars. At the moment, Bobby leading the race, Terry leading the championship. Now let's see what the speeds are with Dale and Queen Frack. Still a little faster, a mile and a half an hour yep. faster than Bobby Labonte. But he's got a good ways to go, 18 laps to go, and I don't think he can catch Bobby Labonte. I don't think he's, he might get up to Gordon, but I don't believe he'll catch Bobby Labonte. And Bobby Labonte right now, is Jeff Gordon is definitely not catching Bobby Labonte. And I tell you, there we see Labonte come off the corner, we see Jeff Gordon back there. And, you know, Ned, this would put Bobby Labonte on NASCAR's exclusive winner circle if he went to win this race, but he would not Jeff Bodine off. So oh, I'm sure okay. that Jeff Bodine and the crew would be... Uh, Probably against Bobby Labonte. Exactly. Right <laughs> and that's a minimum in 1997 of $232,000. All right. So that's a lot of money. But you yeah. know why Jeff Bodine is saying, come on, Bobby, don't win this race. <laughs> Morgan Shepard running right ahead of the leader of the race, Bobby Labonte. Morgan, let's see, is back in 28 spot, five laps down. Let us see that Dale Jarrett is two and three quarters second behind. Terry Labonte, five seconds behind his brother. But right now, he's trying to win the war, not the battle. Yep. Got a 12 and a half second separation of the top ten. Well, there's a group of cars, three, six, yes. eight of them. Take a look and See where your favorite driver might be going by. Now the interval now only 2.3 seconds back to third place, Dale Jarrett. So you're going to have to catch and pass Jeff Gordon, and that's going to cost you another half a second or so. And even if he's able to do that, I'm not saying if he's able to do it, he's, he's catching Gordon in a hurry. But getting up there and passing him might be a different story. If you just joined us, that interstate to Chevrolet. Next year will be a Pontiac. Joe Gibbs announced that he is going to use the Pontiac Grand Prix next year. Here we see Dale Jarrett. He just a couple of car lengths behind Jeff Gordon. And he's come over three seconds behind him. Oh, in the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, he's been running that high groove here recently. See what kind of a run he gets off of that turn yeah. when he runs up there? So he's found something that works for him this 
spotter and his crew chief and everybody tell him, hey, that's a good line for you to take. Guys up there, I don't think they're working on this pair. Didn't lose much, but he didn't gain much either. He's less than two seconds back. But this is definitely going to cost him some time here while he's, he's passing Gordon. That goes up if he does. He might have it. He uh, might have him. He's so coming off this corner. No, yeah. not quite. <laughs> to go you can see 12 laps to go he's going to try it on the high side again this time back behind them terry labati has caught dale earnhardt so he's going to try to pass that yeah he lost another tenth of a second so it's up to over two seconds now between first and third and you say well don't jeff gordon move over and let him go by because that's second place absolutely near the end of the race money don't make any difference to either one of them here and there. Jaren's got to run down on the inside this time coming off of turn two. He might have him going into turn three. Jeff is probably back off and not racing in. Maybe he will race. He will race in there. He's been, they said Jared's been running high in that turn and beating you up there, so he can stay up there. But I don't believe he's going to be able to hold to come back by. Nope. Dale Jarrett moves to second, putting Jeff Gordon back to third. Now he's got to make up two seconds. Well, one and three quarter seconds. In the next 10 laps. Can he do it? Oh, well, he pulled a good bit away from Gordon just in one lap there. Back to Dale Earnhardt and Terry Labonte. Earnhardt is running fourth and Labonte fifth. Labonte not straining that car. He's just running himself a good, solid line. Not upsetting the car. He's running a good, solid race today. He certainly has. We see running a great race. Dale Jarrett gained five hundredths of a second. Obviously, ooh, I don't know what kind of man sure did. He came off that corner way high. And now, you see that Dale Jarrett is only a less than a second and a half behind Bobby Labonte. He's definitely gaining. But I'm afraid he's running out of time, too. Eight laps to go. One and a half seconds separate first and second, and Jeff Bodine has a problem that results in his coming in for a late pit stop. Running back in 24th position. The leader, Bobby Labonte. Well, Jarrett shaved another couple of tenths off. Got a couple of cars here, it's got to pass. Yep. and a half laps to go but there are 17 cars on the lead lap and if somebody has a problem even on the last lap it could determine the championship don't go away the title contenders have got to finish this race terry labonte does and although he's solidly in fifth at the moment anything can happen that's right there's, there's 23 cars one lap down or better. And boy, Bobby Labonte racing Dave Marcus there. He didn't want that. He's going to be able to get on the ramp, but, but uh, Dave racing hard into turn three. And that might have cost him just a little bit of time. That interval now is shrinking to just a slight bit over a second. Now it goes back up to 1.2. gets by, that is the Billy Standards car, the red and yellow car, he certainly does not want to run across those guys running side by side. That's for sure. That's the, the worst scenario that he could be would be for them to run. There they are, side by side as he catches them. That's not what he needs. He said, come on, guys, one of you, please, pass the other one. And Stanwick backs off. Good move on his part to good sportsmanship, I should say. On his part, he backed off. The Jimmy Maycar, the uh, crew chief of the race, on the number 18 car of Bobby Labonte. Congratulations to Jimmy.
Western Auto Mechanic of the Race. And that award will also be made known at the NASCAR Winston Cup Banquet at the Waldorf Astoria. I wonder how Thanksgiving dinner will be if Dale Jarrett catches the Jimmy Maycar's car. <laughs> at your house. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> that'll be a <laughs> nice uh, feast. Jimmy Maycar is married to Ned's daughter, Patty. Dale Jarrett, his son. Well, I guess they didn't have to talk about it. Oh, yeah, they, they, they know how the tracing business is. They, they've all been through it before. It looks like somebody's going to be able to do it. They're uh, talking about brother, son-in-law's brother-in-law's and all that. There was an article in the paper this week. Dale's brother-in-law, Kevin Spears, was seriously injured yes. in an automobile accident this week. And uh, it was in the Atlanta paper that it was Dale's uh, sister's husband. Well, well, Kevin Spears is not married. Kevin, we hope you're doing fine up there, buddy. But it was uh, Kelly, Dale's wife's brother, that was injured in the accident. And we're keeping our prayers from him. And Mark Martin and Bobby Hamilton are waging for position here as the white flag is about to come out for Bobby Labonte. There it is. One more lap to go for Bobby Labonte. And one more lap to go for Terry Labonte, and the championship will be his. We're on the final lap of the 1996 season for the Winston Cup Series. What a great season it's been, and we're glad to have had our part in bringing you all of it, and especially in bringing you this championship race. There's Terry. He's uh, got less than a quarter of a lap to go. Bobby Labonte is in corner number four now, coming off of it, and Bobby Labonte wins the race. The checkered flag comes out, and Terry Labonte has become the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup champion. Terry Labonte, 12 seasons after his first repeats as the Winston Cup champion. That's the longest between intervals of first and second championships. And the banner has gone up over Terry's pit area. What a day it was for the Labontes. Both have reason to celebrate here, but the big reason is the championship. And you can see Jeff Gordon has slowed down and salutes the champion this year just as Jeff Gordon was last year. Jeff will finish second in the points for 1996. I tell you, it was a tremendous effort. The three championship contenders started in the top five. They finished in the top five here, so they raced for it all day long. Dale Jarrett finished second, Jeff Gordon third, and Terry Labonte fifth. Here's Jerry Punch. Well, Gary, Gary Dehart, it's been a long year, but boy, what a nice one for you. Congratulations to how standing up. Well, we, we, we did what we had to do today, Jerry. Uh, we had to stay out of trouble for one thing. The car wasn't as good as Bobby's. What do you think about that right there, buddy? Bobby Labonte and Terry Labonte, that looks good, don't it? That, that, it couldn't have been a better day. Uh, I'm just happy for everybody. The team done a heck of a job. You know, what else can I say? That's Gary Dehart, the winning, the championship crew chief. Now over to the winning crew chief, John. Well, I'm with Jimmy Maycar, also the uh, mechanic of the race award. And Jimmy, what a day for you guys. Well, I'll tell you, it really was a heck of a weekend. You know, we've had a tough, uh, a tough year. We've struggled back from uh, starting our own engine program. A lot of, a lot of little things, and we've, we've, we've been out of victory lane all year long. We really we didn't need to stay out of victory lane this year. And it, we came to Atlanta with three goals in mind. Uh, that was a, to sit on the pole, lead the most laps, and win the race. And we had an outside shot to sit in the top ten in points, and that's what we had to do to do it. I don't think, I think 43 finished good enough to keep us out of there, but we accomplished those three goals. It just uh, just shows the strength of this race team and how these guys can pull together and when time has come. And things get rough, and they can come back and, and have a day like this. It just makes me proud to be associated with these people. Well, congratulations, and head on up to victory lane. Bob, up to you. The final point margin, 37. Terry Labonte, the championship over Jeff Gordon. What a day for the Labonte's. Bobby wins the race. Terry, the championship, back in a moment. We are back at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and there is the winner of the Napa 500, Bobby Labonte, still in his car. He's about to emerge to the applause of the thousands of race fans that gathered here today to see this event and to see the champion crown for 1996. And Bobby's brother, Terry, is that person. Here comes Bobby out of the car. He's the Napa 500 winner for 1996. <laughs> 
Here's the McDonald's Winner Circle interview with Bill Weber. And it has been a roller coaster season for Bobby Labonte. It started off tough, upside down at Daytona, but victory lane here in Atlanta, and a great day for your family, too. Congratulations. <laughs> Man, it's the coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I'll have to admit, but uh, I'll tell you, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet, we, uh, this is the hat right here today. The Interstate Battery Chevrolet, we, uh, <laughs> I tell you this thing, we had a we had an idea what we we're going to do when we got here th this week, but uh, we didn't realize what was going to happen. But you know, I just like to thank Interstate Battery, Shell Oil, uh, Easy Care, Champion, Food Line, NFL, Goodyear Tires, and all the all these great guys behind me. You know, they're the ones that did it. Um, you know, it's just uh, Chevrolet. Can't say enough about them. We finally pulled one through for them. We were kind of letting Ray Cooper's been giving me a hard time. So. Uh, thank goodness we've gone out as a winner here at Atlanta. We've uh, did some uh, did some good things this weekend, so that was great. And uh, Terry won the championship. And like I said, that was the coolest thing I've ever done. Okay, congratulations to Bobby Labonte. A big day for the Labonte family. And Dr. Punch is with Terry Labonte. Last night it was a Vander Real Deal Hollyfield. Today it is Terry One Tough Texan Labonte. 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup champion. And Terry sits back and takes a huge deep breath inside the car, takes a look at that left hand, and now we'll shake hands. And Terry, I, tell you, I think he's so pooped, we're gonna let him sit in the car. Terry, you're almost too exhausted to climb out, but congratulations. Well, thank you. I, I just don't know what to say. I just gotta thank Rick Hendrick, uh, all the guys on the Kellogg's team, all our sponsors, Quaker State, uh, GMAC, Kellogg's, uh, all the guys that just hung in there. And, it's just a great day. Terry, we talked the other day at the shop, and you said three years ago a lot of people had stopped believing in Terry Labonte, but Rick Hendrick believed in you, Kim believed in you, and you believed in yourself, and now you're back. I never thought it would take 12 years to come back after the first one, but, uh, you know, you just you just can't ever give up. And There was a lot of awful good people that helped me get here today, and, and uh, I just, just owe it all to them. You know, winning the race would have been great but having your brother win the race and you win a championship what a family day for the brothers Labonte yeah which one's better <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what it was a great run for Bobby and we talked about it last night and I knew he was running awful good in practice and we were kind of joking around and we, and we said you know it'd be pretty cool if you won the race and I won the championship and you know never dreamed it would happen that way but uh, it's an exciting day for us how about the left hand? We talked about no one said you didn't complain at all all day long, and I know you're holding it on your knee there, but uh, that had to hurt you. Well, it did. We uh, we shot it up a little bit before the race. We didn't shoot it up enough because it uh, it kind of started hurting there about the last half of the race, but uh, feels like a million dollars right now. How about a million and a half? Last night there were snow flurries in Atlanta, and today a young driver nicknamed the Iceman is crowned Winston Cup champion. Bob? And that interview, Jerry, uh, very emotional. Uh, there, that first question, he was really unable to speak, and that is what NASCAR Winston Cup racing is all about. These guys are really tough, but uh, when it comes down to uh, this, it's very emotional. Well, let's take a look now at the uh, final point standings for 1996. Jeff Gordon winds up 37 behind Terry Labonte, but all of these 10 drivers are going to be on the stage at the Waldorf Astoria for the NASCAR banquet, and we will salute them even further then. There are the uh, 11 through 20 drivers in this year's point standings. Well, let's take a look now at the results of the Napa 500 for 1996. Bobby Labonte was the winner of the race. He led the most laps, and the yellow darts there will indicate those who led a lap. Jeff Gordon finishes third, Jarrett second, Dale Earnhardt fourth, Terry Labonte was fifth. Great season, guys. It was a terrific season. Congratulations goes out to Terry Labonte. Also, Bob and Martha, I know you got to be awfully proud of your boys today. And well, they should be. They've, they've raised two great young men as well as two great race drivers. There is Terry Labonte continuing to get the congratulations of those who have gathered here today. Coming up next, Shop Talk. And this will be your first opportunity to buy some of that championship merchandise that Terry Labonte will have for you to buy. 
Well, we thank very much the uh, race organizers, the track officials, the NASCAR officials for their continued cooperation with us during the season, and most of all, you fans for being with us. Yes, we will have that extensive coverage of Daytona that we had last year on the Deuce. We'll have it starting in February. And Benny and Bill and I will be with Winter Heat three weeks from today in Tucson, Arizona. Congratulations to Bobby Labonte, winner of the race, and Terry, the champion for 1996. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.